sell a historic Key West Stadium where tonight it's opening round play of the U.S. Open Cup here on USsoccer.com. Alongside my broadcast partner, John Krieger, my name is Neil Wool. Happy to have you with us for tonight's matchup. And John, the U.S. Open Cup continues to gain in popularity, and tonight we have a good one. It's the oldest competition in the sport in the United States, and the, the pedigree tonight is one of the best matchups in the first round, and perhaps in terms of rivalry in the entire tournament. You've got what has to be regarded as the most successful amateur soccer club in the United States in U.S. Open Cup history in the Michigan Bucks against Detroit City FC, who have become a national darling and have had more than their share of attention leading up to this fixture. They have been around since 2012. It's their fourth appearance in this competition, but they are first in their remodeled and revamped home of Keyword Stadium in front of what they believe are the best supporters in all of soccer, the Northern Guard. It's going to be a fun night, Neil. My only, I guess, regret is that this is a first-round matchup for these two teams, and somebody's got to lose at the end of the evening. There's really no question about it here in the 2018 U.S. Open Cup. Real quickly, I'll give you the starting 11 for tonight's matchup. First, the Michigan Bucks. Number two, Brad Ruhan. Number five, Jerry Timmer. Number seven, Mitch Cardenas. Number nine, David Gordsmith. Number 10, Giuseppe Baroni. Number 13, Daniel Macuna. Number 14, Brad Dunwell. Number 21, Matt Nascuenza. Number 23, Ivo Serda. Number 26, Marcelo Borges. And the goalkeeper tonight, Jimmy Haig, as we are underway here at Keyword for the first nine minutes of this Watch City stream. I'm brought to you by Wheelhouse Detroit. Wheelhouse offers retail, service, rentals, bike tours, and for anyone interested in riding up to Keyword, a free bike ballet on all DCFC match days. Wheelhouse Detroit, locations in Hamtramck and downtown Detroit. We're quickly the starting 11s for the home side. Detroit City FC, their starting keeper tonight, Nate Steinwasher. Number three, Jimmy Biscus. Number five, Stephen Carroll. Number nine, Sean Lawson. Number 11, Raphael Menzigan. Number 14, Brad Sintala. There's an early possession by Detroit City FC. Number 22, Elliot Bentley. Number 44, Danny Deacon. Number 49 tonight, Wilford Williams. Number 96, Omar Sinclair. And number 98, Brandon Martell. Going to be interesting to see how the Michigan Bucks line up today, Neil. Detroit City in Ben Pierman's preferred 4-3-3 lineup. Detroit City will face a Bucks team that will either go 3-5-2 or 4-3-3 in their own rights. Here's a whistle that goes against Detroit City, so it'll be a dangerous free kick spot for the Michigan Bucks. Michigan Bucks founded in 1995. They play in the USL EDL. As you alluded to, John, one of the most successful amateur soccer teams in the United States. They played at this U.S. Open Cup 15 times in that time frame, which is truly amazing. Ardenas puts it on frame just over top of the box. So a dangerous chance by Mitch Cardenas. Cardenas with the bend on the free kick. But credit needs time. City keeper looks on early tonight. Neil, on paper, these two clubs, the Michigan Bucks, have a little more pedigree in terms of recognized talent. However, they've only had one training session as a unit as they get ready to begin their PDL season at the newly joined Lansing United this weekend. Whereas Detroit City FC have played three friendly matches. And so at least in the early going, Ben Pierman will hope that that cohesiveness they've learned over 270 minutes will help. And you see, John, already the box very physical. On that back line as that ball served up towards the 18, but a very 
solid defensive play by Brad Ruhak, which you would expect. Went from walk-on to two-time all-MAC first-team performer at the NCAA soccer powerhouse that is accurate. As a pro, we played six matches for North Carolina FC of the USL last year, and that speaks, John, to what you were talking about in terms of professional pedigree that the Bucks do have. Well, it's the changing landscape of U.S. soccer. You know, the, the demise of the current incarnation of the North American Soccer League forced changes throughout the pyramid. And so where you had two Division II leagues in USL and NASL, now you have only one. There's a limited number of, of sides out there. And so up and down the pyramid, guys are slotting in. And so you see some of that trickling down as far as the USL PDL, which, although it's an, a fourth division league as well, does have that USL umbrella. Squenza makes a run. Oh, is headed away. But it will be a corner for the box. Here is your kickoff weather for tonight at Keyword Stadium. Get to temperature 70 degrees. And the wind right now, as you look at your screen at the back of the Michigan box, a pretty sizable wind. I mean, it's not overwhelming. I wouldn't quite call it gusty, but it certainly is an advantage in the first half for the ball. Well, it certainly is. Now, one could say that being able to hold up a set piece into that breeze can allow you to run set piece plays. So City could have the advantage on, say, a free kick direct on goal. Where it won't necessarily help is on the corner to bend down that goal. So it'll be interesting to see how the teams play the win and whether or not balls up into the air ride the breeze a bit tonight. These two teams matched up in the 2016 U.S. Open Cup, which was a battle of 40 ages that was played out at Oakland University. They were scoreless all the way through. Detroit City FC went through on penalties. Where the next week they went to Louisville and played, and they were scoreless all the way through. And then next round, they actually fell on penalties to Louisville. These two teams have a history here in the U.S. Open Cup. And, of course, we were talking about the Bucks and what they've done in the U.S. Open Cup. They were the very first PDL team to beat an MLS team in the U.S. Open Cup. They beat the New England Revolution at Foxborough Stadium back in 2000. They also beat the Chicago Fire in the 2012 U.S. Open Cup. So this is a Bucks team, as we talked about, very successful amateur side, but also big-time victories over the highest levels of soccer in America. Absolutely, and a long-time reputation of developing top talent. among today's college players wanting to play in this experience and be a part of the match days here at Keyworth. It's worth noting that uh, Dan Duggan has been a longtime champion of Michigan Bucks. And it's his passion to have this club and, and continue to have it develop talent. And, and uh, he has been a, a significant driving force behind that. And the results bear out on the field. A lot of people don't remember that after beating the New England Revolution, Foxborough. They welcomed then MLS side Miami Fusion to Ultimate Soccer Arenas and lost 6-5 on penalty kicks. Both sides converting all five of their original kicks and then a Bucks miss and a Pablo Mastrani make sent Miami Fusion on through but the Bucks were sending out and dismissing two MLS sides. Danny Deacon tried the quick restart off the handball call calls Deacon back, puts him to the proper spot. Head coach of the Bucks, Paul Thomas, in his first season, spent four years as an assistant coach on the Bucks staff. The director of coaching is Gary Burton, their technical director is Demir Mukhtari. For Detroit City FC, of course, it's Ben Pierman in his sixth season here at the helm of La Rouge. The associate head coach, Kale Wasserman, the technical advisor is Klaus DeBoer. Zempel is served up into the 18. The assistant coach and director of player development is Jordan Andrews. Mullen is the director of goalkeeping and the other assistant coach, a man who has a very legendary beard. He is Josh Rogers. I love Stephen Carroll early going here, moving forward from his defensive position and providing service, sitting on the ball right now in the last five minutes of possession. And how about Danny Deacon, who went down with a bit of a knock in the friendly against Harpo's FC last week. He wanted to play in this match, and he's out there taking the free kicks early. There's no quit in the former Orlando City man who's trying to find another way back into the professional game and chooses to do so here at Keyworth, the heart of a lion from the former Sheffield Blade. Corner play.
played over top of the bar by Detroit. Almost eight minutes. In the opening round of this 2018 U.S. Open Cup, Neil Wool, John Krieger, happy to have you on USsoccer.com. Bucks now with the control in their defensive third. Daniel Makuna. Three goals last year as a center back for the University of Michigan, was also a Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week as well. We'll see that with the Bucks. Some very high level college players, former pros as well. We got a very good one here. We're excited to have you with us. Here's Sean Lawson. Lawson on the move. Will retreat. The far left corner. Just trickles across the goal line. And they will go the other way with the goal kick. For Jimmy Haig, the goalkeeper from Michigan State, was a first team all Big Ten performer last year. How about this number? 13 goals against with 11 shutouts at Michigan State. Is that good? I'm asking for a friend. That's good. Yes. <laughs> when, yeah. you, when you have almost as many shutouts as you did goals allowed, that's pretty good. We can officially call that good, yes. You know, it's interesting. You talked about the Bucks' physicality early. It knocked City off the ball a couple of times in the early going. I think they are slowly adjusting to that. You're seeing kind of a, just a little extra, you know, an, an extra bulk of the body up, up top for City uh, attackers, knowing that the contact is coming and getting ready to, to shield against it and keep the ball and be able to turn it. It was going to be a process of adjustment for City against this bigger Bucks team. They are slowly getting it done. Daniel Makuna cleared that one out for the Bucks yet again. Wilford Williams makes the move over, but settling his doubt is Brad Centella, also a Michigan State guy as well, scored his first career collegiate goal against Michigan. So that had to taste real sweet for him. Nearly a giveaway on the other side of midfield. And Neil, it looks like the Bucks are going with the 3-5-2. So they are trusting their three at the back who have so far proved very resolute. And what they're trying to do with that five in the middle is not allow City's midfield three to get those through balls. It allows you the freedom to press forward a little bit. You have people in midfield that are there to help you close down the ball and not let it get through to the forward three. And the other thing it allows you to do if you can get a turnover in midfield, those outer two in that midfield five can bomb forward and start the outside runs on the wings. And that allows the two up top to get service. So the 3-5-2 early for Michigan Bucks, and they're hoping just to win the battle of midfield and take it to an advantage on the scoreboard. Now on the right side, here comes the Bucks attack. To the middle, it's done well. It's taken away by Wilford Williams. Wilford Williams, the draft pick for Detroit City FC. Sporting Kansas City in the fourth round. Was a former member of the U14 and U15 U.S. national teams. And out at Oakland University as well. Ball served around to the right side by Barone. Timmer. Kuna. A lot of space on the near side for Cardenas. He's wanted the ball a couple of times. Made a couple of nice starts or runs and no one seems to see him. See, he need to do a better job. Carroll on the near side of finding out where Cardenas is and putting a body on him as he makes runs. Bucks now settling in with some good possession. There's Giuseppe Barone. Ball's touched over the line by Menzigan. Throw in for the Bucks. This nine minutes of streaming are presented by Strategic Staffing Solutions, the official sponsor of the S3 Beer Garden at Keyword Stadium and the DCFC International Series. Keeping with that International Series theme, of course, FC St. Pauli. Second Division Bundesliga will be in town on May 19th, 6 p.m. kick here at Keyworth Stadium. You can get your tickets at DebtCityFC.com. Of course, that match will also be available on television in the Detroit area on Fox Sports Detroit. So some big things happening here at Keyworth Stadium with Detroit City FC. Detroit City FC here trying to work out from their back line. Nice pressure by the Bucks to force City back. Long ball sent ahead towards the middle of the pitch. 
Bucks will settle it down, though, as Brad Ruhak does the deal. Jimmy Haig. John, one of the things I think you're seeing from the Michigan Bucks right now, movement in unison, which which is very impressive given the limited training time that they've had to work with so far this season. Yeah, it is a very, very composed attack, more composed than I thought it would be early on from the Bucks. The runs are good, the pressure is good, and sometimes when you haven't trained together for a while, Neil, the solution is just to, to run and run hard, and you'll figure things out, and here's a good run up the near side. Borges on the move, still has it. The cross is swallowed up by Nate Steinwasher. And credit where credit is due, Barone had made a nice run into the area, and I think they were trying to bend the ball back to him at the front of the six-yard box, and it didn't have enough purchase on it, and Steinwasher was able to get through and make the grab. Steinwasher with the touch. Sends it to the right side. Omar Sinclair has it. But again, there's that pressure from the box that we were talking about. Sinclair touches it to the middle and mission accomplished for the box as they get the turnover in the midfield. You know, it's not often that you see, and this is another thing City's going to have to cope with. They're getting some of their own medicine. The Bucks are playing a very high back line. Look at that touch there. Brad Dunwell has it. Trying to make the turn is David Goldsmith. Goldsmith, a very accomplished scorer as that ball is sent over top of the frame. Yeah, it's frustration by Cardenas. He's wanted the ball for about four or five minutes, screaming for it as he's made runs down the run down the wings. And he got it on his boot just outside the D and said, I'm not gonna wait for someone else to give it back to me. I'm gonna do something myself. The body was in no real position to put the ball in on frame, and so Steinwasher gets to put it in play himself. We were talking about Mitch Cardenas. He led the NCAA, the entire country, in assists back in 2012 at Campbell University. He was also a draft pick in the MLS, second-round pick of Sporting Kansas City in 2013 as he serves that one towards the 18, and that's headed out of harm's way by Jared Timmer. But it will be a corner for the Bucks. Well, City doing a nice job of tracking that ball in the air. And a nice header to get it away from a, night, a good run by Barone, who was going in and had a step. A higher line for City, nobody on the post, and so it's forcing the Bucks to be a step or two further back. Ardena serves the corner. It's headed back, right foot shot will go wide of the left post by David Goldsmith. Another corner. Another corner coming up for the Bucks, and we talked about Goldsmith. And Francis Atuahene was a top five pick in the MLS draft last year. He was a striker of note for the Bucks. David Goldsmith, though, a very accomplished goal scorer as well. Played last year with the Indy 11 of the NASL, scored three goals there. So a very, very capable goal scorer as well. Settled down again by Goldsmith. Neil, all 11 or all 10 of the Bucks outfield players are in the city attacking third right now. That's how high a line this is for the Bucks. They have decided they're going to run at City all night. If they get burned on the counter, so be it. But they have done what they wanted to do, which was compact the field, and they're winning the physical battles because of it. And of course, as you said, that high back line. Allows some pretty great pressure, and this is a good shot of it right here. I mean, Detroit City FC not getting a chance to breathe with the possession in the defensive third. No, as soon as City get a player on the ball, you have one, two Bucks players closing them down immediately. And the other thing I enjoy in, in watching them early is that, first of all, while the two midfielders try to close them down, the forward man's trying to get in behind while staying on side so that if the ball sports away, they can pick it up. It's a really controlled attack and press right now for the Bucks. The ball will trickle over the line. Another throw in coming for Detroit City FC as they continue to try to matriculate the ball up the pitch. Omar Sinclair will toss it in. Of course, Sinclair had that free kick against Duluth. In the playoffs last year for the MPSL, that was a thing of beauty. Boy, that was a, that was a free kick Roberto Carlos would have been impressed by. Absolutely, and now Omar Sinclair being directed to come back and take the throw in from the actual spot. Wilford Williams tries to track it down. 
And that high line for the Bucks came back and two players on Wilford Williams. Closing him down. He never got off the ground. They both won the ball in the air. Played it away harmlessly. Sent all the way down the pitch. Jimmy Fiskus tries to track it down. There's Nate Steinwasher about 30 yards away from his line. And the Bucks win a throw in, but again, just more pressure. 18 minutes and 17 seconds so far played in the 19th minute here at Keyword Stadium. And although we're goalless, it has been all Michigan Bucks in the early going. And it is saying something for having one training session together that they've been able to run and press this well against this city side who is playing on their home pitch. So it looks to be here tonight. If the city wants to make their attack, it's going to have to be out of the counter, John. Absolutely. And you're going to have to be able to be physical against this Bucks team. You know, you know contact is coming. You're going to have to ride through it, stay on your feet, get it going on the counter, and the first touch has to be good. Because if the first touch doesn't settle the ball within about a foot and a half radius of you so that you can keep it inside and move it with you, these Bucks defenders are going to be on you. If you show them any of the ball, they're going to take it or they're going to use the physicality when you're, when you're played away from the ball to be a little more physical on the shoulder challenges and muscle you off in a legal way. So City's first touch has got to be great tonight. It hasn't been as good as it could be in the last couple of friendlies against Chattanooga here at Keyworth and against Harpo's last week. That was the one thing that I think Ben Pierman would have wanted a little better. A little better first touch, a little better movement. And tonight, they're going to have to have that first touch against the team closing them down very well. You and I were talking before we went on the air. That's the key to the game, man. That first touch is what sets the entire table. Sets up the whole timing of every single play, every single possession. See? And Bartel swings it back to the middle. And there's the first touch we're talking about. You want to settle it down and not do that. See, you have to turn around and you have to reset and City keep possession, but only because the Bucks defenders weren't there. Here's an aggressive run through the middle, but it's taken away by the Michigan Bucks. Now it's taken back. And here's Brad Centella up with Wilford Williams. Centella steps back. To the middle, right-footed shot was sent in by Bartell. That was played out easily by the Bucks. But really, John, the first offensive life we've seen in a while from DCFC here in the 21st minute. And a nice step over move there to take it forward again. City settling in here now, figuring out that they can get that first touch, and there's a, a foul against the Bucks. Plus, City players appealing for fouls on some of those physical plays. Our referee tonight has set the standard. He's going to allow a little bit of that physical presence, and so City has to get used to that. You don't want to be appealing to the referee at every free kick or at, at every opportunity for what you think is a free kick. This nine minutes of action brought to you by Motor City Casino Hotel, the official casino hotel of Detroit's soccer team. 22nd minute, no score here in the opening round of the 2018 U.S. Open Cup here on ussoccer.com. Alongside my broadcast partner, John Krieger, my name is Neil Rule. Happy to have you wherever you may be watching around the world. If it strikes your fancy, send us a tweet with the hashtag WatchCity. Read those as the evening goes on. As Always talk about one of my caveats. If you are watching on an airplane, send us a tweet. And you'll go right to the front of the line like Cameron Marshall at C Marshall MSU. He sent us a pick. He watched a match in the past on a plane. I guess that counts for right now. So we'll go ahead and shout that one out. Throw in coming up. He looks Four rather points. like you, my friends. <laughs> we, we have found your doppelganger. And he is on a plane watching City right now. Also want to say hi to Abby and Ali listening down in Mobile, Alabama, and our friend Hogs living, uh, living and listening in Louisville, Kentucky. Omar Sinclair punches that with the left foot towards midfield. Sean Lawson unable to settle it down temporarily. Wilfred Williams slides it ahead. Daniel Makuna has been all over the field. And John, if there's a guy, especially for this Bucks defensive line, that has been a standout here today, it's been Makuna. Absolutely. He's a big man in the middle, and he's not afraid to come forward and start the attack as well. But big, he knows. big is the operative word. That is a 
That is a physical specimen, is Makuna. He and he is fit, let me tell you. Right. He, he is a sentry in the middle of that back line. And he can play, you know, he has pace too, and he can play a step or two off the ball and then come and close you down. By the way, I want to say a special hello to someone who's normally here with us at Keyword Stadium on match days. Dion De Janeiro, who is one of the photographers here that takes pictures of Detroit City FC matches. He broke his foot traveling to the friendly in Chattanooga. He is missing the match tonight at Keyworth for the first time since DCSC moved here. And so he's home watching the Watch City stream. Hi, Dion. Wish you could be here. Hope the foot's healing well, and we'll see you for the league opener in a couple of weeks. There's Danny Deacon. The possession that's taken away from him. It's Cardenas. Had it for a moment. That ball will trickle over the goal line, so a goal kick upcoming. As Jimmy Haig will pick that up right in front of the lift sign. Behind the cage. Jimmy Haig will send it out. Haig, of course, another in a long line of great goalkeepers from the Michigan Bucks. Of course, you have Steve Clark, who starts for D.C. United right now, went to Oakland University, Mitch Hildebrandt with the Atlanta United in the MLS as well. Also an Oakland guy. Adam Grimace as well with Orlando City FC. Went to the University of Michigan. And Drew Shepard with Toronto FC too, who went to Western Michigan. So the goalkeeping tradition for the Bucks still intact. The Bucks solid between the sticks and also still solid position. You know, I take a look at the way they're setting up and I take a look at the way Haig sets up around his area. I love it when a keeper's out there standing at the edge of the box and knowing that he can get back into position and watching to be that catalyst if a back pass comes in to come out if he's got the room and send it back up to your midfielders or your back line and keep that high press on. Fernando Pena did that for DCFC a lot last year and it was a big reason that they had that long unbeaten run in the NPSL season because Pena was so good in his area in controlling that with position. I see the same thing out of Haig. And Haig's positioning and the ability to come out and be a sweeper keeper allows that line to stay high for the Bucks. Once again, over on the left side, DCFC making a run. Deacon with the cross. It's loose for just a moment before Jimmy Haig scoops it up off the turf. More tweets coming in with a hashtag Watch City. John Leonard says, I'm one of the two dudes running the U.S. Open Cup 2018 mega thread on Reddit tonight. Go on over to Reddit. Hashtag USOC 2018. Getting that mix. NGS Harvard Yard, of course, watching from Boston. That ball's punched loose temporarily. Now it's played up towards midfield. Donnie at Donnie N42 watching from Smithfield, North Carolina. He says, come on, City. The NGS Cleveland Embassy is watching tonight as well. That's I-76 Express on Twitter. So keep them coming in, guys. We appreciate you checking in here for the 2018 U.S. Open Cup on ussoccer.com. Alongside John Krieger, I'm Neil Rule. 27th minute. No score. But, John, I would say the last four or five minutes we've seen the city attack come to life. Absolutely. They've, got, they've gotten some joy down the wings. And with increased spells of possession like the Bucks have had, sometimes that can, if you're not careful, lead to a little bit of complacency and the thought that you can always close everything down. Well, Danny Deacon is a pretty fair player in his own right. And if you're going to give him space, he's going to run. And about two or three minutes ago, he had a fizzing cross in, and it was about a three feet away from Sean Claude Lawson, who had made a heck of a run. And it could have been 1-0 very much against the run of play. So the Bucks, although they've controlled things, have to guard against complacency because City, if you give them the chance on the counter, can make you pay in a hurry. Danny Deacon, the 64th overall pick in the 2017 MLS draft. Orlando City FC, a two-time All-Conference USA first team performer at South Carolina. He had five game-winning goals as a senior. He scored big goals his whole career. And Deacon, as you talked about, here with Detroit City FC. And, and really that speaks, John, as, as we look at the landscape of the U.S. Open Cup tournament. Look at these names that we're talking about here in this match. The, the highest levels of players 
in American soccer here today on both sides. I don't think it's a coincidence that we've seen the rise in popularity as that corner is served in and popped up and out. It, it's no coincidence that we've seen the rise of popularity of the U.S. Open Cup tournament. The fans love it. They do. And, and that reason, the big reason why is the caliber of player continues to climb with the U.S. Open Cup. Absolutely. And this is an interesting cross, but then it's knocked away. And will we see a corner? Yes. So watch this here. I'm going to answer your question after the corner here because... I don't want to necessarily uh, start something that the Bucks might finish halfway through. But you're right about the popularity rising, and I'll tell you why as the short corner comes in in just a minute. Possessing it on that right side, Giuseppe Baroni. Baroni will cross it. Steinwasher punches it, and we will get a whistle and a foul called against the Bucks. The next nine minutes of action brought to you by Henry Ford Health System, the official team positions of DC FC. And that message coming at a fitting time as both Nate Steinwasher and a Bucks player are down writhing after that mid-air collision and while they're down I'll answer your question. Yes, the U.S. Open Cup is gaining in popularity in part because U.S. soccer is I think marketing the tournament better and better. We saw some of the features that were done for Detroit City FC, the preview there, the preview that U.S. soccer did for AFC Ann Arbor uh, who bowed out of the tournament this evening. Uh, over at Eastern Michigan University tonight. So the Mighty Oak from the NPSL out of the tournament uh, tonight. But the U.S. Soccer Federation doing a, a, a great job of promoting the early rounds. And especially as you bring in some of these international players, and especially as you have the, the rise of popularity of the FA Cup from over in England here, the fact that we have a cup competition in our own right, I think some of the popularity rubs off on it. And, you know, there was a great piece in the uh, Athletic here in Detroit, James Edwards uh, the third, writing a great piece on what the U.S. Open Cup means to some of the DCFC players. And Dave Edwardson, the city captain who's fighting his way back to match fitness, talked about the fact that City making the second round of the U.S. Open Cup back in 2016 and beating these Michigan Bucks on penalties, he called it his most important match in his time at the club and so this is a club that's won its region championship in the NPSL but being able to advance and progress in a situation like the US Open Cup means something to these players and so I think that's why the promotion and, and the fact that that kind of knockout competition uh, and what it offers the chance to go up against the big boys as equals will make this tournament continue to grow in popularity comes Danny Deacon with the possession and, and that is part of the romanticism with this tournament it is truly open theoretically you can you can be a fourth division club and you could find yourself playing MLS sides and of course last year with what happened with FC Cincinnati and Mitch Hildebrandt that we talked about earlier that was a big story from the US Open Cup as they continue to win and oh by the way the winner of tonight's match heads down to Cincinnati to yeah. take on FC Cincinnati so right off the kick You'll get that opportunity. And we know you've got a lot of fans down in the Queen City watching tonight, watching to see who their next opponent will be. That magic of the cup and that run for them, I think, is is something that continued to put that club on the map. And so that's what these teams are trying to be a part of. Danny Deacon sends that one inside the 18. The Bucks will pop it high in the air back out towards midfield. The fun part about cup competitions, Neil, honestly, is that it's designed to be a, a position of equality. If you're in the round and your number is drawn, you're an equal. Whether you come from the USL PDL or the, N uh, the NPSL, if you're in the hat and in the draw, it doesn't matter that you play in the fourth division and the MLS side plays in the first division. You are drawn as equals. and. If they've got to come in and play on your pitch, well, that's what happens because that's how the draw came out. And that's kind of the romance of the cup. It's what we see, as I've talked about, with some of the European Cup competitions. You know, I always chuckle when I'm watching the FA Cup and I watch those Premier League sides go into dressing rooms of the second and third division clubs where they're just pegs on the wall and having to adjust to that. And, and you see some of that with the MLS sides against lower division clubs when it happens. And it makes it fun. Ivo Serda with the touch. And then it's touched down by Baroni. Serda makes a run, but played nicely off the ball. So a tremendous defensive play for Detroit City FC and Steinwasher, who looks okay after going down with that injury. 
for a couple seconds anyway. Papa back up, looks good to go. And we got a tweet from Cincy Soccer Talk. A bunch of us down here in Cincinnati are tuning in, which you figured they would be. Ryan Kluster on Twitter says, I'm watching City from Ann Arbor. And we appreciate it wherever you guys are watching around the country. You're in Ann Arbor, man. Come down to Keyworth. We want to see you down here next time. Wilford Williams runs over. Sean Lawson in the mix with Williams. Wilford Williams taken down by Baroni. The whistle sounds. Giuseppe Baroni, the 2016 Big Ten Freshman of the Year at Michigan State. Also spent some time in the U-17 U.S. National Team Residency Program. So a restart coming for Detroit City. 33 minutes on the clock, Neil, and the pace has stagnated a bit in the last five minutes. That injury timeout kind of took some of the, the air out of the place a little bit, and I think the teams have struggled to find joy since then. City doing a nice job of shutting down the Bucks midfield five with their midfield three. Throw in coming for the Bucks. We're here at historic Kiewer Stadium. Some of you tuning in. This is your first exposure to Detroit City FC. A tremendous story behind this stadium and what took place, and we'll give you that as the evening goes on. Truly one of the special stories in all of soccer in this country. Oh, here's the counter. If they can get the through ball, watch out. Sean Lawson trying to make a run, and Lawson cut off by Jared Timmer. Timmer, nice job to step in front of Lawson. Yep, Lawson Timmer. had a step there for a minute, and Timmer just closed it right down. Timmer, 2015 all Big East team performer at Butler. Another high-level guy on this field. And here are the Bucks with the possession, trying to move it through the middle. Touch back by Goldsmith. Barney's going down everywhere. The whistle sounds. Interesting decision on the foul. First contact, I think, was by the Bucks player. Foul goes against. And they will say the foul goes against the Bucks. I thought they'd pointed the other way. Less interesting of a decision. And, John, we were talking a little bit about this Keyworth Stadium. Very interesting and inspiring story. The stadium here, essentially, John, built by the people. Works Progress Administration project opened by FDR himself. Ball served in, and it's... I don't know quite sure if Sean Lawson... Got a touch on it or not, that cor or that cross is sent back in, and now it's played out. Will there be a corner awarded? There will be. Sean Lawson was there, and I think he did get his head on it, but not the way he wanted. You want to get the, the, the front of the forehead on the ball, and he was able to glance it off the side of his head, and it went in behind him. So a corner kick upcoming for Detroit City. Danny Deacon will do the honors. Bucks putting men on both posts. That allows City to play where they need to be. Offside will not be a problem. Watch the bending ball to the back post. There it comes in, and it's eliminated by who else? Daniel Makuna. Again, he has been rock solid in this first 36 minutes. So big in the air, Makuna, and so easy. I'm just going to go up and flick that away. Right. He, he reminds me a lot of a former... Bucks defender that's now applying his trade with the Columbus crew and Lalas Abubakar who was a high draft pick in the MLS draft just a guy when you, when you try to play that service in there it's just going back out that's just the way it is the next nine minutes are presented by Lyft the official rideshare partner of DCFC be one of the first 500 supporters to ride Lyft to the next DCFC match you will get five bucks off your ride with the code DCFC St. Pauli. So that tremendous partnership with Lyft here and Detroit City FC. Interesting note about Makuna, by the way, Neil. Spent some time in the Burnley Academy before coming over to these shores. And that explains a lot of his physical presence. You take a look at Burnley FC and their, their rise in the Premier League and, and being able to be up and stay up in the Premier League this year. But you take a look at the way that academy plays football. 
they teach physical football. They teach their young players to be physical in the air. They, especially in the English game, which for my money is probably the most earnestly physical in the world. So if he went up as a defender through that system, the first thing they will have taught him is to be unafraid of contact and to learn how to make your contact legal and effective and physical in the air. And we're seeing that tonight. Ball along the far sideline and trying to make a move with it is Ivo Cerda. Cerda was a team captain at Michigan last year, the native of Santiago, Chile. Throw in coming now for Detroit City. Special hello to our friend NGS in Alamo City, tweeting, I wishing I was home in Detroit, but happy I can watch the Watch City broadcast. Says the Northern Guard sounds wonderful tonight. And Michael Wayner goes to the front of the line. Why? Because he's tweeting this from an airplane. He's got his Detroit City FC water bottle on the tray table from midair. So he goes to the front of the line. Why don't you come on over tweeting at us? I'm watching City in Burlington, Vermont. NGS Flynn. Of course, Flynn is going to watch City. Elaz Rouge and Gold. And we got him flying in here tonight. Big audience out there watching this one. And why not? We knew it was going to be a good one. It has been so far. These two clubs, of course, have a history in this U.S. Open Cup. Ball swung out wide to the left. Giuseppe Baroni. And that ball's played over top of everyone. And a goal kick up coming for Nate Steinwasher. Bit of an unsung hero tonight for Detroit City FC. Brendan Bartell in the middle. He's been in that holding midfield role. And there's been a couple of times where he has been able to stymie the Michigan Bucks press coming forward and not allow them to move the ball through midfield. Good positioning. Doesn't overcommit to the ball. Makes the player he's defending make the first move. And Bartell's been pretty good in the middle. Wilford Williams battles for it at midfield for Detroit City. Touched up. Sean Lawson the target. Hold it up, Sean, right here. Hold it up. And then, wow, nice job to close him down there. Yeah, that was Marcelo Borges, the second team all Big Ten performer last year at Michigan. He plays for the U.S. national team U-20 squad. Also spent some time in the New York Red Bulls Academy as well. 41st minute, nil-nil the score. Neil Rule, John Krieger with you. Comes an attack up the left side. That ball's played out for a corner, I believe. But welcome to the 2018 U.S. Open Cup here on ussoccer.com. 41st minute, Neil. City getting most of their joy to move the ball in the attacking third on the far side. Coming up as they're running at it, the left side of the pitch. Would not be surprised to see the Bucks send an extra man out there. Danny Deacons had a lot of good run up that far side from us. Ball played out easily by Barone. Now back up towards midfield. On Twitter with the hashtag watch city at Surgeon Scary, longtime watcher, first time tweeter. Love you, love your show. Could you play some Slayer? Yeah, we'll work on that, Sarge. Well, we'll see if we got Slayer in the <laughs> see if we got Slayer in the system. You know, if he had <laughs> asked for anybody else, I might have been able to accommodate. <laughs> I think I think I purged the last of my Slayer record. Maybe Iron Maiden. You got you got some Slayer deep in that playlist, no doubt about it. Some somewhere very deep. <laughs> From a very dark time in my past. Cardenas plays it long up the left side. And that will be escorted over the line by Omar Sinclair. And John Omar Sinclair's been very busy on that back left corner. Yeah, he has. And that's because the Bucks have sent men forward. It's actually when they can press that that line high enough, those mid those outer midfielders in that midfield five will come up and make the front line almost four men wide. And Omar Sinclair has had to do a nice job of of preventing that service from coming in. See, look at what Haig's doing here. Just taking time, back pass in, settles things down, reads things, and then sends things up to get it started. That's a good keeper. Just take stock of things and be sure enough on the ball to restart play the way you want to. Ball trickles over the touchline. More tweets coming in with the hashtag WatchCity. 
DJ Mad Logic, former Detroiter, checking in from New Jersey. Oxilla one tweets at us, watching tonight from New York in anticipation for the FC Cincinnati opponent. We're getting a lot of that, right? A lot of folks from Cincinnati checking out the action here tonight. Welcome to Detroit City football. Refugees welcome. Come on up, enjoy a match. The ball sent ahead by Giuseppe Baroni again. Oh, nice job just to get in there. Get the ball out of danger. And not allow that through ball to go through for City. John, what a, what adjustment has Detroit City FC made in that we, we saw the Bucs for the first 25 minutes of this match really tilt the field. But since that time, Detroit City FC has been able to mount more of an attack offensively, and the, the Bucks' chances have been limited. Well, first of all, Neil, uh, the back line has gotten much more on the same page. They're across as one unit. Part of the reason that the Bucks were able to take early chances is that the center backs and the right and left back for Detroit City weren't necessarily on the same page. Second of all, better first touches in the midfield. And third of all, I think adjustment to the physical contact and the ability, once City realized that a physical contact was being allowed, they had some of their own and were able to kind of knock the Bucks off the ball and find space. And as I do that, not the best first touch, but here's a good counter. Here comes a counter for Detroit City. Wilford Williams on the right side. The attempt to send it over to Williams, though, is deflected. And coming off the line to make the grab is Jimmy Haig. But that brought the crowd to their feet here at Keyworth and had the opportunity to be a very dangerous chance. And the last thing I'll say is credit where credit is is due to Wilford Williams and to Sean Claude Lawson. Both of them on the forward line saw that City's midfield needed a little bit of help and tracked back. And so when you start in that 4-3-3 and you have forward line players that are unafraid to come back and play in midfield, then it can even up the score a little bit in terms of bodies in that midfield and allow for the unselfish play that's created some offensive chances. So there's a lot of things this city have done a lot better after the first few minutes. Evil Serda, some beautiful possession from the box. Borges moves it ahead. Coming out and eliminating the threat with Stephen Carroll, the GLIAC Defensive Player of the Year. This is college soccer at Davenport. And Carroll had to do a really good job, Neil, of keeping control of his body because when you make that kind of a run toward a ball two, three steps, referee will take notice. And if you're out of control, you can give up a free kick in a very dangerous situation. Carroll did well to keep the body in control. This will be a throw-in for Detroit City here as we're in the stoppage time of the first half. Neil Rule, John Krieger with you. The 2018 U.S. Open Cup here on USsoccer.com. This may be one of the best tweets we've ever gotten on the Watch City hashtag from our opponents last week. Harpo's FC tuning in from Colorado to watch our Detroit City FC and NGS Detroit Bros. Great atmosphere and experience last week. Last week beat the Bucks. Well, I can tell you, City is trying to do their best to oblige your request. There's Danny Deacon out on the left side making a run again. Deacon, the cross, can't get enough on it. Right foot shot, gets through, and the diving stop is made by Jimmy Haig. And the whistle will sound, and Detroit City FC, very dangerous over the course, John, of the last 15 minutes of that first half, and have seized some momentum in this game. You know, we weren't sure if Danny Deacon was going to play in this game. And Danny Deacon has been one of the city's best players in this game from his ability to withstand some of the contact, find some spaces, and beat a man on the far side. And he fizzes one in, and then on a rebound, it's fizzed back in at Haig. And City coming brightly and finishing the half on a very bright note. It's a very positive, very encouraging thing for Ben Pierman as he takes his side back into the dressing room. We're going to have a fun next 45 minutes because Detroit City Football Club have proven they're here to play. They withstood the early onslaught, and now they had probably the best chance of the game for either side there with Haig having to go down. And the last thing I'll say about it, you know, Haig got hands on it enough to keep it out and then was able to go and collect again. Don't sleep on how hard a save that was for Jimmy Haig. Anytime you have to go down on a shot where the ball is traveling out, you're screened a little bit, and the shot comes fizzing in back at you, 
and you have to go down to get your hands on the ball, that's an incredibly hard save and a very good one by Haig. By all rights, could have been 1-0 City with the final kick of the first half. 45 minutes in the books here in the first round of the 2018 U.S. Open Cup. We are scoreless here at historic Kiewer Stadium, and we'll take our halftime break. When we come back, we'll have the second 45. Nil-nil our score. We'll be right back here on the U.S. Open Cup, brought to you on ussoccer.com.
Welcome back to Keyword Stadium here. The second half just underway. Detroit City FC picking up where they left off at the end of the first half with some possession in the final third of the Bucks zone. Here's that guy, Danny Deacon. He's been a force tonight for Detroit City. Pass slotted up ahead. One more time, there he is. Daniel Makuna eliminates the threat. He has been impressive here this evening. And Ruhak settles things down for the Bucks. Here is Jared Timmer towards the middle of the field. Second half underway here at Keyworth Stadium. The next nine minutes are brought to you by Fago, the official pop of Detroit City FC. This is a very big rock and ride booth. Neil Rule, John Krieger back with you. The 2018 U.S. Open Cup on USsoccer.com. Good one here tonight. The Michigan Bucks out of the U.S. PDL. And of course, Detroit City FC the NPSL Two quality sides here this evening the Bucks controlled the first 20 to 25 minutes but John Detroit City FC really found their footing the last 15 or 20 minutes of that first half we are in store for a treat here for the second half of this match we are indeed but I'll tell you what this Bucks team coming out of the dressing room looking very composed that line is high and pressing again they're trying to jump on just like they did in the first half Trying to pin City back and watch this service in if they can find a man. Nice touch. Mitch Gardenius sends it across, but that's taken away by Sean Lawson. And Lawson essentially tackled by Jared Timmer. And we're going to see our first booking of the day. Mr. Timmer going in the book. And by the way, credit where credit is due to Elliot Bentley, who made a slide that put that ball towards Sean Lawson, giving of the body with a controlled slide to deny the opportunity for the Bucks to provide service. The free kick coming here in the 48th minute. All sent ahead here, Sean Lawson trying to get on the end of it. He does. Good play by Sean Lawson. Lawson, whose father Samuel played for the Jamaican national team. He also played for the Jamaican National U-17 team. So some international experience running in the blood of the Lawson family. And that foul will go against Jimmy Fiscus. Of course, U.S. Open Cup, John. Three subs, that's it. You get your three substitutions to use, that's all you get, so you have to be strategic. Well, that's what happens when you're playing a game and in a tournament that goes up and down the period, the pyramid, Neil. Uh, you have to keep the rules consistent. So MLS, the top levels of the game, play with three subs. You're going to have three subs here tonight. Of course, that's a little bit different than Detroit City FC fans might be used to in the NPSL, but that is the story here tonight. Uniformity across the board. Daniel Makuna sending it over. Makuna has been outstanding here this evening. Yeah, he's putting on a show, and... Uh, he is very secure. Him at center back allows the right to left back. The other two backs in that back three for the Bucks to have a little more freedom. And that's a pretty good touch there. And look at Bentley getting in a good position to deny the service in. Nice job by Elliot Bentley to track back and get back in position. Mitch Qatar plays that one up ahead. So Mitch Qatar, the substitution on here to start the second half from head coach Paul Thomas of the Michigan Bucks. First substitution used for the Bucks. That ball sent ahead. Boy, Giuseppe Baroni showing some good speed. Here is Guitar in the 18. Guitar, a very highly talented, touted talent. Baroni tries the far post. Nobody on the other end for the Bucks. And well, you said it. He was all state as a freshman at Troy High School. Over 1,900 minutes played as a sophomore at Wisconsin. And you go to the University of Wisconsin, that's a quality Big Ten soccer program. The Big Ten Soccer Conference continuing to grow as a, a, bre a breeding ground for top talent in the college game. And he had a pretty good season for the Badgers. And there's a man in Jimmy Hague that made a pretty good, a pretty good save to keep us deadlocked at nil-nil. 
Remember the last time these two teams met was also a nil-nil game after extra time. So we are at current through 170 minutes of soccer between the Michigan Bucks and DCFC without a regulation time or extra time goal. The last time these two teams met, 2016, DCFC progressed to the second round with a 4-3 win in a penalty shootout. The videos of the celebration by the Northern Guard after that one still go viral. They were making the rounds this week. Jimmy Fiskus plays that one up into the crowd just to get it out of harm's way. Connor William tweeting in. Connor Ferguson, former LaRouge player, watching U.S. Open Cup action from Houston, Texas. Well, Connor, thanks for tuning in and thanks for wearing the Rouge and Gold. Glad to have you in the family. Once LaRouge, always LaRouge. Mitch Guitar along that far touch line. Ball pops out free towards the midfield circle. The Bucks will try to settle it down and make an attempt on the right side. There's a good guy to do it, Brad Ruhawk. I am so impressed with the way City have come out of the dressing room. They knew that, that the Bucks were going to try to press them up. And Rafael Mensingen is running around this pitch. Trying to do things all by himself and doing a pretty good job. He's come back and tracked in defense. That was a pretty good start to a run in midfield. He's going to be a player to watch, I think, for City this year. Throwing coming for the Bucks, Tucked into that corner. Marcelo Borges will throw it in. Williams along that far sideline. Now we'll toss it in for Detroit City FC. I want to say hi, by the way, down to Louisville, Kentucky, to Doc Marconi, and also to our friends in Boston, NGS Harvard Yard listening tonight. Folks, for a second, thought about the quick throw in. This gives me a second to give you our weekly trivia presented by Fago. This week's question, how old is Keyword Stadium? How old is Keyword Stadium? We'll get you that answer in just a couple minutes. 54th minute, nil-nil the score here in Hamtramck. Neil Rule, John Krieger with you. The 2018 U.S. Open Cup on ussoccer.com. Been everything we thought it would be so far. Interesting as I look at City's shape right now, Neil, they're still in Pierman's 4-3-3, but it isn't the 4-3-3 we normally see in NPSL play. Two of the front three tracking back and almost making it a, a midfield five in defense and then going to the 3-3 three, three in attack. And so they're going to have to run harder. It's going to be more taxing on a couple of members of the DCFC front line. But they've done what they needed to do to, to neutralize the midfield five of the Michigan Bucks. Stephen Carroll swings it to the left side. Next nine minutes of play brought to you by Level One Bank. At every home match, Level One hosts a different small business in the new DCFC Level One VIP section. Make sure that you check that out, the Level One VIP section here at Keyworth. Small business champion of the match hanging out over there. Level one VIP section. Also, now it's time for the answer to our weekly trivia presented by Fago. This week's question, how old is Keyword Stadium? The answer, 82 years old. Built in 1936. And John, we began to give the story. But a special tale is told. Detroit City FC, as we talked about, a club for the people. They were very hands-on, the supporters were, in terms of getting the stadium ready for Detroit City FC soccer action. Absolutely. This is truly a community effort, and it has been since this stadium went up 82 years ago. It was a Works, works Progress Administration project opened by FDR himself. And there were some people at the time that thought that the works 
Progress Administration was a bit of a boondoggle, that you didn't need to invest public money in projects like this, especially during the Great Depression. But as he opened this stadium, FDR said the world, the words, if this stadium be a boondoggle, then I'm for boondoggles, and so are you. It has stood on this site and been host to events that shaped American history. Presidential candidates have appeared here, and here in the city of Hamtramck, it slowly started to fall into disrepair and was actually close to being condemned. And that's where DCFC, that had outgrown Cass Technical High School, decided they needed a new home, but Keyworth needed a facelift. And so DCFC supporters, through a State of Michigan initiative, basically loaned the club nearly three quarters of a million dollars. Ball sent ahead, headed across the frame. Settling it down inside the 18 is Fiscus. And now it's cleared out by the Bucks defense. But the most dangerous chance of the match thus far for DCFC. You know, we were talking about first touches, Neil. If Fiscus had a better first touch on that ball, it's 1-0. It trickled away from him. He couldn't get it from his chest to his foot. The ball goes all the way through. Headed up off the crossbar. Sean Lawson fires and finds it back in the net. It's a goal for Detroit City. DCFC with a 1-0 lead here in the U.S. Open Cup. Lawson scores. They shout. The Northern Guard will smoke him out. 1-0 City. Detroit City FC from a set piece. They had a high line because of it. The defenders were up. They had pinned the Bucks back. The crossbar, the unkindest cut. And then Sean Lawson, who was Mr. Everything up front along with Tyrone Mundy a year ago, gets City its first goal in normal time in the U.S. Open Cup since 2012. And they lead the USL PDL side with half an hour to go. So Detroit City taking the 1 0 lead. Of course, the winner. Advances in U.S. Open Cup play to play FC Cincinnati next week. So the Bucks up against it now, Mr. Krieger. And the free kick coming on the right side by Cardenas. Most dangerous time in soccer is about the first five minutes after you've scored. You cannot take your foot off the gas, especially in a set-piece situation like this. Watching near post ball here as the corner is set to come in. Not a lot of coverage on the near post and a couple of possible free runs here if the Bucks choose to take the corner short or the free kick short. Go towards the back post, but the DCFC back line stands tall. Steinwasher, good claim of the ball to come out. Steinwasher will put the boot to it. This match has been turned on its head by Sean Lawson. Strikes for the goal. So the former Oakland Golden Grizzlies product, Sean Lawson, has put City up. And the foul will go against Brad Sintala. Uh, Brad, you don't want to do that. That was the, his first reckless bit of play tonight. Keep your body about you. You have the one goal lead. The tendency sometimes can be to be over-eager and over-amped. And we've got our first city sub, and look who's coming on. Neil Rule, someone who was also injured last week against Harpo's FC, and we weren't sure was going to play. But I don't think a little knot can keep Cyrus Sadie down. He comes on for Detroit City FC here in the 60th minute. Midfield maestro Cyrus Sadie. To this match, replacing Wilford Williams, as you said. But John lost in all that, too, in that scramble, the play of Elliott Bentley for Detroit City FC in that lead up play. And when we were talking about Golden Grizzlies. How about Elliott Bentley getting the job done as well? And Bentley's a guy that has championship pedigree uh, also. Remember, he was on that Midland Odessa club that came in here to Keyworth and beat Detroit City FC at last year's NPSL National Semifinal. And he had the chance to come here and play for the home side. He knows how to win in big situations. And you're right, it started from the back and from defenders to put the pressure on. 
And how about Sean Lawson also for not giving up on the play and following the shot off the crossbar? So many times the ball goes off the crossbar like that. Players in the attacking third overcommit, over pursue, and a defender can come in and hoof it away. Sean Lawson followed the shot, got on the end of it, and put it up underneath the bar. Giuseppe Baroni with some nifty footwork. Doesn't get much on that left footed shot as it trickles wide. Let's take a look at the upcoming matches for Detroit, Detroit City Detroit FC City as they will play host to FC St. Pauli as part of the international series that will take place next Saturday, May 19th here at Keyword Stadium. The opening kick at 6 p.m. DCFC fans, make sure you stop by the Folding Warehouse just down the street here in Hamtramck before you make your way to any Detroit City FC match. Of course, that will be available on television here in the Detroit area as well on Fox Sports Detroit, a truly historic moment for the club. Rafael Menzigan makes the run into the left corner and tracks it down nicely. Danny Deacon's inside the 18, can't step through with it. Deacon tried to slither between two of the back three for the Michigan Bucks and almost got there. And now a foul and maybe a second booking here. We'll see. No, just a free kick. The next nine minutes of play brought to you by Lyft. Every time you ride with Lyft, you have the option to round up your fare to the nearest dollar and donate the change to a charity of your choice. This season, DCFC is matching all the donations made through Roundup and donate on rides ending at Keyworth Stadium. So as you always can with Detroit City FC fans, make a difference in the community with Lyft. Great partner with Detroit City FC. That ball played out over the line by Makuna again. This will be a corner, I believe, for LaRouge. By the way, Jimmy Fiscus picked up a caution following the Sean Claude Lawson goal. So one of the city defenders on a booking. Thanks to Lindsey Pearson and the DCFC Twitter feed for letting us know that. In all of the melee and through the rouge and gold smoke. Oh, if you can bend one toward the back post here, good things can happen. The Bucks allowing City to crowd that area. It's tough for Haig to come out and claim a ball. Ball sent ahead. Haig tried to punch. It got through everybody. Did Haig get a piece of it or no? Absolutely, he did. That's a great play by Jimmy Haig. Got oh, his hand on it. Carlo Marks on Twitter, sending my love to my hometown from New York City. Hashtag Watch City. Very cool photo of the TV screen and their place of residence as well. You can follow along on Twitter with the hashtag Watch City. Send us a tweet. We'll do our best to get out there flying in from all over the country here tonight. As the kids would say, fans are lit tonight. They yeah. are all about this U.S. Open Cup here on ussoccer.com. Absolutely, and I'll tell you what, we got another booking. Another booking for a city player. And City's got to keep their composure about them. We've got a one goal lead. One goal leads advantage, or rather vanish, in the blink of an eye. It's the nature. Here's Sean Lawson. He's been the magic man tonight. He's got the goal. Right-footed shot trickles in. Hay goes down to make the save from the shot by Mensigan. Rafael Mensigan, the first-team All-Missouri Valley Conference performer out of Valpo, had nine goals last year. It was a great turn by Mensigan. He had space. I think he scuffed his boot on the carpet on the way through, trying to follow through, and it scuffed the shot so Hay could make a relatively easy collection. Elliot Bentley again through the middle. Mensigan again, boy, he has been tremendous here in the second half. Mensigan makes a run, trying to back heel it to himself. Cyrus Sadie makes a run, and he will be hit with the foul as he takes down Jared Timmer. And that's a little bit of a professional foul by Cyrus. He saw the counter was on. Little clip, got even with the body so that a booking wouldn't be called. It wasn't a takedown from behind. That's just Cyrus being smart, allowing his defenders to get back and get in position. That's one of the cerebral things Cyrus Sadie does on the ball. Mitch Cardenas will come off for the Bucks. Jake Roof comes on. Second team all Mac performer last year for Western Michigan, transferred from Indiana. Now Roof was a 2014 State of Alabama Gatorade High School Player of the Year. Tons of talent for Roof. And remember, he knows playing here at Keywords. He spent last summer with AFC Ann Arbor. Guitar turns with it. So one more sub left. Head coach Paul Thomas and the Bucks. Mo 
most successful amateur soccer team in the country. But they're up against it here tonight, down 1-0 in the 66th minute. The crowd on hand, as always, here in Keyworth Stadium. Able to settle it down. We'll see if the Bucks can capitalize. Oh, look out. Yeah, slotted ahead. A lot of options here for the Bucks. And that cross is knocked over the goal line. Bucks had the chance with men making runs toward the near post to us. If they could have turned and gotten something flicked across the face of Steinwasher's goal. There were a lot of opportunities there. Credit to the city defense for just helping that ball to be marshaled over the byline. We have a Bucks player down on the far left sideline. Bucks training staff out to come take a look. And John, this is a situation. You're the Bucks. You've used two subs already. That's where this comes into play. Yeah, and you got to guard against a little, being a little, little leggy. And, you know, we talked about the fact that they've only had one training session with each other. Well, the first part of that, they kind of got through. They've figured out how to play with each other. And they haven't looked that out of sorts. And that's to their credit. The other part of it is, when you've only had one training session together, your fitness levels aren't on the same page. Everybody comes into a training camp with a different fitness level. Everybody comes in with a different work ethic. Everybody comes in from different college, professional, and workout programs of doing different things. And some guys get a little leggy as you get toward 65, 67, 70 minutes with limited subs. And when you haven't been able to slot them in for the Bucks to their, their own training regimen and get them used to the match routines that they have during the season with substitution patterns, that's where pace and fitness and fatigue kind of show through, especially in a hostile away environment like the Bucks are facing tonight. It's Marcelo Borges that's down across the field. They're stretching it like it's a cramp situation, which obviously you hope that's what it is. It was a muggy day here in Hamtramck. Some rain came through, which we were delayed about 30 minutes. There was some lightning in the area, so they had to delay the start of the match. Once the rain came through, all of the humidity seemed to leave the air and it cooled down a little bit. And an opening kick temperature of 68 degrees. Yeah, but you think about that, okay? An opening kick temperature of 68 degrees, Neil. At this time of night, the last five or six days, 50, 43, right. 42, 45. And now all of a sudden, you have moisture in the air. You know, you've got a slick surface because the rain's come down on it. And you're going to have to run through that, and that all takes its time. Borges across the field, and he's really trying to walk this off. He is noticeably limping. Now, the interesting thing here, by the way, because the clock continues to run, this is going to make the end of this match very, very, very interesting. Because remember, this all goes into stoppage time. And so we've had at least four to five minutes of a delay here through the two injury delays that we've had kind of in this second half. And so there's going to be a lot of stoppage time. The difficulty with stoppage time, especially if you are the team that is trying to hold the lead. You know, we see it often in soccer. You know, you'd think you got a one nil lead, you keep trying to play your normal game. No, once you get down to that 85th, 87th, 88th minute, it becomes about preserving that lead and preserving that victory. Teams will retreat into their shell a little bit and try to get going. And so with a lengthy stoppage time, it could turn to a situation where the Bucks are kind of all hands to the pumps and going forward, and City doesn't know just how long they will have to defend in that kind of situation. Going to be an interesting conclusion here at Keywoods. Steinwasher puts the boot to it as we resume play. Alfonso Pinario has checked in to the match. That's the third and final sub by my calculations here for the Bucks. And unless there's a rule change I don't know about, they're done. Here in the 70th minute. So circle this. Here comes Ivo Serda inside the 18. Cross ahead, stepping in. Left foot chip will go over top of the bar by Giuseppe Baroni. That was probably the most dangerous chance the Bucks have had here tonight. But Baroni put it over top of the bar. So close. 
trying to feather that over Steinwasher, and that was a momentary lapse by the city back line to allow a lot of space. Some more tweets coming in with the hashtag Watch City. Acting coach Austin checking in from Kansas City, but my heart is always at home with Detroit. Johnny Maria 316, I'm in Ferndale. Great job, guys. Go Golden Grizzlies and go DCFC, of course, and it's been a night. <laughs> The former Golden Grizzlies at least here. Sean Lawson with the goal. And settling it down through the middle. Mitch Guitar. All hands on deck here for the Bucks. I'm loving the left midfield part, the partnership being formed between Mensing up, up front and Bartell for City. They are teaming up on Bucks midfielders with Mensing coming in and chasing from the front side and Bartell being that holding man in the middle. And it's turning things into a bit of a vice from which City is squeezing possession away from the Michigan Bucks in midfield. Antio on that chance for the Bucks. His first touch let him down. Jimmy Haig sends it up ahead. Nice touch there by Mensingen to get it to Deacon. And look at Deacon taking the nice measured pass. Not trying to go forward too quickly, looking for the open space and City get a throw here from which to set things up. Danny Deacon in the middle of midfield. So good for City so far this season. Elliot Bentley tosses it in. Ball goes across the line as it's escorted out by Jared Timmer. So the goal kick coming and right away, John, a little more pep in the step of the Michigan Bucks as we motor on into the 73rd minute. Fans, Take your next experience at Keyword Stadium to the next level by upgrading to the DFCU Financial Lounge for complimentary food and drinks and on-field seating. Go to tickets.debtcityfc.com. And the next nine minutes are presented by Detroit City Fieldhouse, Detroit's new indoor athletic facility opening September of 2018. Leagues are now forming. Check out debtcityfc.com slash fieldhouse for more information. Very exciting product or project going on for Detroit City FC. And that ball Look out through and Nate Steinwasher off the line just ahead of Jake Roof. Smart play by Steinwasher to come out and collect that ball and not wait to try to make a save. Man chasing down a ball free in the box. And Steinwasher came out and claimed it. Nate is not a keeper that loves coming off of his line, but he's done it twice tonight in very key situations, and it's helped City keep their one goal lead. Through the middle, playing it away is Brandon Bartell. Bartell, this is college soccer at Penn, played over 1,500 minutes last year with every match started as a sophomore. Also spent some time with the Orlando City SC Developmental Academy. By the way, we talked about Danny Deacon being great in midfield. Mom and Dad Deacon watching us from the great city of Sheffield. They're tuning in from across the pond watching tonight. Staying up late. Put the kettle on. Have a couple with milk for me, please. Corner kick up coming for Detroit City. The clock becoming the enemy with every tick for the Michigan Bucks. Clock reads 74th minute. I think we're going to have anywhere between five and seven minutes of added time. Here comes a corner sent in. Oh, and Haig had to be sharp. That thing was coming towards the bar with pace. And Haig touched it over the top. That is such, such, such a good save by Haig to come in and make that tip over the bar. He jumps a second later, and I think that thing curls in underneath, and it's 2-0 City, and this place goes absolutely mental. Here comes Danny Deacon again. He will serve the corner in. The short side is open. Deacon instead sends it towards a six, and there was pace on that one. Jimmy Haig had to be off the line one more time. Danny Deacon is bending the ball well early in this season for City. That curled right in. A little high for anything to be done. Nobody could get a really free header on a ball that came into the six that high. But what a bend on the ball early this season from Deacon so far for LaRouge. 
Roof sends it back. Cerda. Roof. Guitar. Left side headed down and cleared out by the city back line as they rise to the challenge defensively. Daniel Makuna trying to get the attack started one more time. Makuna, however, a step further back than he's played in, in than he played in similar situations in the first half. A little more respect for what Mensing and Lawson and they've been able to do up front. And look at Cyrus through midfield. If he can put this through, no, he'll choose to turn it back. There was a moment there where he might have been able to slide it through to Rafa, but that moment vanished with a good night, a, a nice job by the right back to close down the space. Boy, how about Elliot Bentley there creating some space for Sadie to work in? Deacon sends it out wide to the right. Deacon again working against Benoni. City with some tremendous possession. Some of the better possession of the evening so far from them. Settling it down. Mentz again. He will go with it to the corner. Mensigan has it played away by Roof. Guitar up through the middle and just flat out gave it away. It's Jimmy Fiscus. Nice job by him to come up and keep the pressure on. Sadie dangerous in that spot. Goes out wide for Omar Sinclair. Deacon. Deacon will fire. Couldn't get everything he wanted on it. It's the cage as well. For the first time tonight, I think Danny Deacon would like that back. He's out. Well, but well wide of the goal, scuffed it a bit. There were options if he wanted to reverse field. I think his eyes got a little bit bigger than his stomach there. Tried to bite off a little too much. Popped high in the air right at the midfield line. Loss in the target, retreating is Jared Timmer. Timmer will escort it. Over the line. Grinch tweets at us with a hashtag Watch City. My quad squad watching DCFC from South Carolina. Eric Freeman representing DCFC up north in Cadillac, Michigan. The Open Cup match. Thanks for the free stream. You're and a, welcome. And a big thank you to the folks at USSoccer.com for setting everything up. There's a ball sent through, and Elliot Bentley saves the day temporarily for Detroit City. And then a couple of Fox players go down and are advised to retake their feet quickly. How about that play by Elliot Bentley? That's an all-world defensive play. He gets that wrong by a foot, and it's possibly a penalty, depending on where the challenge is made. Elliot Bentley came through, got the ball, didn't get the man. And it's a great play, and he's made a couple of those. There was that one, and there was the slide out on the near wing early in the first half when Bentley shut things down. 79th minute. The anticipation builds here in the 2018 U.S. Open Cup. Sean Lawson will come off a substitution for Detroit City FC. Greg Janicki will come in. Janicki, John, has the opportunity maybe to play a closer's role here. Yeah, I, I think you're going to see City going with a back five now. Right. Toward the end of the match. Or a 4-2. You know what? They're lining up in a 4-2-3-1 with Janicki across the back line now. And Janicki, of course, comes in with professional experience, spent some time with the Indy 11, I believe, down in San Antonio as well. And so this is a guy who knows how to be big and physical. That's Ben Pierman acknowledging that there will be a point tonight where City will be just on defend, defend, defend mode with the Bucks bombing forward. And Greg Janicki is going to be that big body in the middle trying to clear out the ball. There's a cross that will go all the way through. Bentley will shepherd that one over the goal line. Greg Janicki, of course, also signed a pro contract with DC United of the MLS. I forget who I was talking about. I don't remember if it was you and I talking, but Greg Janicki, one of the more underrated professional players. We were having a chat with David Dway, That's who one, of the, exactly. one of the owners here of DCFC. People, people sleep on Greg Janicki's career and what he did. He was a first-team All-Big Ten performer at Michigan State, as you talked about, played in the NASL with San Antonio and the Indy 11. 
Played his high school soccer at Anchor Bay High School, where he scored 74 goals in three years. And I don't care what level you're playing at, you score 74 goals in three years in high school, you're a good player. I'm a pretty simple guy a lot of the times, John. When you put up numbers like that, I'm impressed. And remember, high school is only playing 25, 26 games right. a year. So he's <laughs> averaging a goal a game in his high school career. You'll take that yeah. all day. <laughs> Thank you. That'll get you to Michigan State and get you to be an all-Big Ten first-team performer and get you pro contracts. And you know what? One of the unsung hero type things for Greg Janicki, he was on the squad list, remember, don't forget, for City for the Midwest Region Final Four weekend and for the National Semifinals. And Ben Pierman used him a couple of times. And he was out there in training. He was settling down some of the younger guys' nerves. And he was just that professional presence in the dressing room. And I have a feeling his appearance tonight has a lot to do with that. I've been there before, guys. I've done it before, guys. Calm down. We're fine. Everything's good. Play your game kind of moments. And that's why you see 20 on the pitch. Mitch Guitar drops it back. The Bucks trying to size up. Detroit City FC at the 82nd minute. The next nine minutes of play are presented by Rip It Energy, the official energy drink of DC FC. We'll say it again. Clock says 82nd minute. I think we're going to have between five and seven minutes of added time here. So we're a long way from over. I think there's about 15 to 17 minutes left in this match for City to hold on. And it's worth noting, Neil, as we talk about adjustments, City has gone to that 4-2-3-1. And you've got a situation where the Bucks have moved the line further up. City have retreated into their own half. You haven't seen it very many attacking forays. We might starting we might be starting to see that shift back into that attack versus defense mode that you'll see oftentimes at the end of matches like these. There you see the wind taking effect. That pass, I believe it was Giuseppe Baroni that sent that pass across. It got up into the wind and then carried it over the far touch line. The box none the worse for wear as they get it back. Northern Guard, the supporters section of DCFC, haven't stopped singing tonight, made it a great atmosphere here. And another Bucks player goes down easy and is advised to retake his position by our referee tonight, who has been unwavering in the standard of play. I don't think you'll have a situation tonight where you can in any way take a look at our officiating crew. One hopes they continue this excellent performance. They've let these two teams decide it with a standard they set early. The teams have adjusted to it. I don't know who the referee's name is this evening. That's a good thing. That's what every, every, every referee wants. And the officiating crew tonight has been great. Oh, and they'll call a penalty. In the left side of the 18. And as I Brad say that. It was Brad that went down. And I wasn't quite sure. I wasn't at a great angle from up here in the booth to see exactly what happened. But that was just inside the left corner of the 18. So a penalty has been awarded to the Michigan Bucks. And I'm going to have a look at this here in about 30 seconds because we're seeing the same delay on a stream that our viewers are seeing. Alfonso Pinario will be the point man for the penalty. 38 goals in his college career at the University of Albany. Pinario. V. Nate Steinwasher. DCFC's lead hangs in the balance. Pinario steps up and he slots it through in the right corner. Neil, I've just seen the replay. Player going away from goal but in the area. I would describe it as softish. But at any rate, we are level at one here in the 85th minute as Alfonso Pinario very calmly and coolly slots it into the lower right corner. And it's all to play for here in Keyworth. That was a difficult penalty decision. I will say this, the city player who conceded the penalty was out of control with his body. It makes it an easier decision for the referee to, if perhaps the Bucks player goes down, 
if the city player's body is out of control, then bad things can happen. So we are level at one here in the 86th minute. Wow. That quickly it turns. And so now we get to talk about extra time procedures here in the U.S. Open Cup. 30 minutes of extra time. Two 15-minute halves, no golden goal. If we are even at the end of extra time, we go to penalties. With everything on the line, that's something that we've seen before with these two teams. In the U.S. Open Cup back in 2016, they played a match at Oakland University. And that was a story. Detroit City FC emerged triumphant in that matchup. Will we see it again here tonight? we got a long way to go between now and then as we're in the 87th minute. Giuseppe Baroni. And the whistle sounds. There will be a yellow card issued to Brad Sintala. And right now, John, Detroit City FC has to keep their composure. Yeah. Still everything on the line here. Brad's out, Brad was out of control there, and he had a couple of plays earlier in the half where he was out of control and was whistled for a foul but not booked. I think that's a booking for continuous, persistent fouling. So here comes the restart for the Bucs, sent up towards the left corner. Headed up in the air and headed out of danger's way by Jimmy Fiskis. But a corner coming. And John, the Bucks have gotten this goal and they have not let up. They're continuing to press forward. And City look a little bit out of sorts. The back line looks a little unnerved right now. And they need to be better composed. So the corner upcoming. Sent in, played back out. Short corner and a nice job by City to just hoof, clear, and concede the other one. And now it's time for tonight's attendance. The official attendance brought to you by Rip it Energy. For tonight's match, the official attendance is 3,416. So big thank you to everybody coming out to tonight's match, 3,416. As always, attendance brought to you by Rip it Energy. Nate Steinwasher taking his time here as a couple of players have taken a bit of time getting onto their feet. Steinwasher now will put the boot to it. We move into the 89th minute. We have had a lot of injury time here through the second half. So John, as you talked about, you can expect a good chunk of stoppage time. Steinwasher out kicks everybody. City much more physical in the air here in the second half. That has done them a fair bit of good. It's forced Michigan Bucks to pay them a little bit of respect. And they've been able to move forward because of it and keep possession because of it. Now we're back to evens, one all. You see City coming out of their shell a little bit. and We get back to where we were with City trying to work forward and reestablish a presence in the attacking third. We move into the 90th minute. It's the 2018 U.S. Open Cup on USsoccer.com. My name is Neil Rule. My broadcast partner, John Krieger, happy you could join us. If you're just joining us, Detroit City FC took the lead here in the second half on a Sean Lawson goal. And then just a few moments ago, a penalty awarded to the Bucks. And Alfonso Pinario leveled this match at one, and that is where we sit. So my follow-up question to that would be, if you're just joining us, where you been? It's been a good one here tonight. Corner kick up coming for Detroit City. Danny Deacon has been dangerous really all night long, especially with these corners. City's heading up like they want Deacon to go to the back post. Deacon sends it towards the near post, and coming off the line is Jimmy Haig to make the grab. Back to the penalty, Neil. You know, 
it was a foul of a Bucks player going away from goal, but the referee chose to apply the law of the game as written, which is if there's a foul in the box, any foul in the box, there's a penalty. That's what the penalty area is there for. There are a lot of referees that would argue that penalties should be assessed on the spirit of the law, which is that it should be some type of denial of a scoring opportunity or a player turned toward goal. But the letter of the law is you foul a man in the box, it's a penalty, and our referee chose a more literal interpretation of that rule. He judged that it was a penalty, uh, penalty or rather a foul. It occurred in the box, and so that penalty called, and we're even at one. We are in stoppage time now. There'll be four minutes of added time. Rolling along the far sideline for Detroit City. Up ahead, the Bucks try to control it, and they do. Back heel towards the right corner. Janicki turns with it. Sent all the way out. Makuna sends it away from a lot of city pressure. Danny Deacon stepping up. And they get the job done as the Bucks give it away. It'll be a throw in. We'll check to see how much injury time there is. Hopefully there's someone that could get four minutes, they say, of injury time. There we go. I was checking notes and we got through to that. Ball tossed in towards the top of the D. It's headed up in the air. Cleared out by Jake Roof. Now the ball knocked out towards midfield. Canadio, his penalty, leveled this match at one. Here come the Bucks on the move up the left side. Jake Roof tried to jump up into the play. He was very dangerous on the right side. It's played away at the last moment. Throwing coming for the Bucks. City trying to slide and take that possession away from the Bucks. A missed slide challenge, and it gave the Bucks space down the wing. That led to the foul, that led to the free kick. But the Bucks choose instead to pass it back. They want to set something up. And they're back three, very high again. They're taking the opportunity to press City. Goldsmith taken down. And this will be a very dangerous situation. The official going to his pocket for the yellow card. That's Cyrus Sadie going in the book. Foul from behind. You foul a man from behind. You're, you are putting your life in the referee's hands. And Cyrus clearly fouled him from behind. Brad Dunwell will step into this one here in stoppage time. Three-man wall. Dunwell, right foot, goes towards the back post. It's flicked on. Nate Steinwasher will make the grab. Smart by Steinwasher to come out and collect and keep it from going out of play for what would have been a corner. Got to admit, Neil, I'm surprised that we had only four minutes of stoppage time. I thought it would be longer. Remember, we go to extra time, 30 minutes, no golden goal. And there it is. We're going to extra time. As you said, partner, to extra time we go. 1-1 one, one the score. So we will play 30 more minutes. As you talked about, no golden goal. We will play the full 30. And right now, the players will get a blow. But John, I think it's worthy of mentioning the Bucks have used all of their subs. Now it's interesting to note, and I do not know this as to whether or not the US Soccer Federation has adopted this rule. There are some cup competitions now over in England where in extra time they will allow an extra sub. I don't know whether U.S. soccer has chosen to use that rule or not. If they haven't, it is, of course, 
DCFC with, I believe, a sub remaining. And the Michigan Bucks would be out of subs. Right now, the officials explaining extra time and the particulars to Alex Wright, one of the DCFC co-owners. We'll have information sent up to us. But let's take you back from whence we came. First 45 minutes, goalless. Sean claude Lawson opened the scoring, putting a rebound off the crossbar, underneath the crossbar to make it 1-0 City. And then a penalty in the late stages of the second half. An easily taken one after Nate Steinwasher committed and left early. Tied us up at one, and we're headed for extra time. Alfonso Pinario slotted that one home in the lower right-hand corner to beat Nate Steinwasher. That is where we stand. 90-plus minutes insufficient to determine a winner. So everything will be on the line. Fitness is going to be a major issue here, Neil Rule. We, we've seen some cramping already from some folks out there on the field. Primarily from the Bucks players. And that's where City having three weeks of preseason training already has paid off. I think this extra time is going to be decided by two factors. Number one, how fit are the Bucks, And will they be able to keep up the pace and avoid cramping without giving City space to mount an attack? On the Detroit City side, frankly, you got to be smart. There have been some careless, reckless fouls by Detroit City FC in the last few minutes. A couple of players, in fact, three or four are now playing on a caution. You have to be smart. You don't want to put your life in the referee's hands. You want to go out there and make the same good, clean challenges. If you get beat, you got that decision to make, but you can't just lunge in, especially lunging in from behind, because if you miss the ball and get the man, you are going to draw the referee's ire. And in the last, say, 10 to 12 minutes, we've seen City's seams coming a bit unruffled and uh, or, or a bit loose, and we're going to want for City fans to see that tightened up if City are to advance here through extra time and possibly penalties. So some of the fans getting ready for the extra time as well on Twitter with the hashtag WatchCity at GusMacker1 says I'm almost out of beer. Hashtag WatchCity. Well Gus you gotta you gotta rectify that. You got about three and a half minutes. So make your decisions <laughs> right now Gus. I don't know if you have time to to run to the store or not. Of course Gus down there in Key Largo, Florida watching the match as the Michigan Bucks break their huddle and they come out towards midfield. we got three minutes of stoppage here, by the way, Neil, and I want to take a minute as we get moving toward uh, through May and toward June to talk about a very special fundraiser happening all around amateur soccer here in the United States, and that, of course, is Pride Riser, uh, started by a couple of DCFC capos in uh, Dean Simmer and uh, Jackie and also Galen from Chattanooga FC, a fundraiser that was started by those two organizations to raise money for LGBT causes in respective cities. Supporters pledge money per goal scored in the month of June, and those monies are donated to LGBT causes in the areas where the supporters groups are active and the website for pride razor pride razor.org that's pride razor.org that's coming up in the month of june raising money for lgbt organizations all around the united states and so if you are a member of a supporters group for a side here in the u.s and are in the giving mood reach out and do some good in the month of june so the bucks will have the possession to start the first 15 of extra time. This is where we are. Everything on the line here in the 2018 U.S. Open Cup on ussoccer.com. My name is Neil Rule. My broadcast partner, John Krieger, the official whistle sound. And away we go. Keep in mind, not a golden goal situation. So we will play the entire 30 minutes of extra time. Bucks with the possession to get things rolling here. Mitch Guitar has it taken away by Brad Santala. Cyrus Sadie 
Moves to the middle, tried to thread it through. Making a run on the other end was Mentz again. Bucks cut that off. They try their own run through the middle. That's turned away by Brandon Bartell. Bartell up the left side. Touched over the far sideline by Jared Timmer. Very good defensive play. Throw in on the far sideline. And in, shot, and a diving save made by Jimmy Haig. City again, right on the ball, and Haig with another great save. He's made a few tonight. So DCFC with some pressure. There's a cross curled in. Boy, making a run with Centala. That Centala almost got on the end of that cross. Oh, look at Janicki being physical in there. He couldn't win possession, but he slowed down the Bucks for a minute. Inerio, he's got the equalizing goal for the Bucks on a penalty, but a tremendous slide tackle made by Stephen Carroll. Carroll's been very good on the back line tonight, made a couple of challenges in the first half, a couple more here. The action, John, surprisingly, here in the second minute of stoppage time, has been a bit more end-to-end. -end. You know, I thought there would be a little bit of a let's get back into the flow period. Nope, they're right back at it. Bucks with a very high line again. Brad Ruha crosses it, the bicycle attempt. He fell off the bicycle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So Nate Steinwasher will pick it up after the obligatory pressure from Pinadio. Steinwasher bounces a ball on the pitch and now puts the boot to it. Got all of that one targeting Cyrus Sadie. Bucks control. Acuna has been outstanding this match. Long hopeful ball sent up. Right into Steinwasher's area where he will collect. Makuna has been an absolute anchor along the back line for the Bucks. And if there are people out there, you know, he is a player that people already know his name. But if there are people out there watching the stream tonight, he's just the big boy in the middle that has shut down an awful lot of city pressure tonight. There's an attack from the left side. Will that result in the corner? No, the goal kick. Off the knee of the city player and out. At Baron NGS on Twitter with a hashtag, watch city, work vibes. He's watching it on his phone on his lunch break. Good on you, Baron. That's, that's commitment right there. Don't let that silly work stuff get in the way of the U.S. Open Cup. Man. Nope. That's why we have streams. Absolutely. Besides, this is productive and patriotic. You're being a good American. Well done. The ball trickles over the line. Throwing right in front of the Detroit City FC bench. Ben Pierman giving some words of instruction. <laughs> some rather emphatic words of instruction, if we're going to be honest about it. There was something there Ben didn't like. I like to say he's giving a tutorial right now. Yeah. Coachable moment. Throwing popped up in the air. Acuna. I say that's a Bucks throw. Brad Ruhak will come over to do it. Ruhak played six matches for North Carolina FC of the USL last year. Watch out. And there is. is a red card issued as Evo Serdas down on the turf. And the fans here at Keyworth and also the Detroit City FC players not happy about that. A reckless challenge. He's gonna. The referee is saying it's a high boot. And who's being sent off? Is that Greg Janicki? Yes. 
Greg Janicki gets the red card. Evo Serda still down on the turf now as he pops up. So Detroit City FC here in the fifth minute of stoppage time will play the rest of this match with 10 men. Neil Janicki went in with a high boot, and the referee is saying he made contact. And if you go in with a high boot extended like that, and the referee sees you make contact with your studs, you're going to be done. We saw that happen here at Keyworth a couple of weeks ago with a player being sent off for a high boot. Janicki was going to try to play a ball, had his leg fully extended. The referee said he made contact with the player. And when you have a high boot like that, that's an unnatural and reckless play in the laws of the game. And that's why City are down to 10 men. Looks like City will slide into a 4-4-1. Down to 10 men. So now, John, if you're Detroit City. Well, first of all, you're absolutely right about the formation. Well done. That pass threaded through. Nate Steinwasher will jump on it. So if you're City right now, John, penalty's probably looking like the goal right now. You know, you hate to say that. But, but yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, let's just I mean, live in reality here, guys. That's where you're at. And now it becomes having played six minutes of the opening half of extra time, you got to hang on for 24 minutes. And if you can get forward, that's fine. But you can't get forward at the expense of allowing yourself to be exposed at the back. It becomes the, the risk-reward situation, and especially with some of the Michigan Bucks pacey players out wide, even though they're out of subs. If you overcommit and you open up space, you allow for runs in behind you. So can DCFC hold the fort for about 23 minutes of stoppage time? We will find out, or excuse me, of extra time. We will find out here in the 2018 U.S. Open Cup on ussoccer.com. My name is Neil Rule. My broadcast partner, John Krieger. Happy to have you with us. We are level at one. But Detroit City FC up against it now. Playing with just 10 men. And City with the 4-4-1 formation. They're just trying to deny those passing lanes, go a little wider on the wings with the wide midfielders now, not allow the runs through, batten down the hatches. And you take a look at it here, Neil. There's a ball in midfield there. City, earlier in this game, might have tried to win a challenge and go forward. Now they're waiting for that ball to be played and just content to keep the ball out of their, their defensive third. That is a scenario right now for La Rouge. Steinwasher puts that one up near the heavens as it comes down in midfield. The Bucks trying to possess now. They'll try the left side. There's Giuseppe Barone. He's been dangerous at times here tonight. Barone will win a corner. Nope, they'll give it a goal kick. I think that's a good decision by the official. By the way, the winner of this match, whoever it may be, will head down south to the state of Ohio in the Queen City. It will be a date with Cincinnati FC at Nippert Stadium that was a cauldron for opposing sides in last year's U.S. Open Cup. They were the darlings of the U.S. Open Cup last year. And that's going to be a fun environment down at Nippert Stadium for whoever survives this war of attrition in the first round of the U.S. Open Cup. FC Cincinnati has it popping down there. There's no question about that. A tremendous environment down there as well. Who will it be? We're trying to find out. We move into the 10th minute of extra time. Steinwasher plays it short. Boy, and Omar Sinclair was rolling out. That's a mental lapse by Omar Sinclair. Ran without the ball with nobody else back. 
Bucks will try to take advantage. Ivo Cerda sends it to the top of the D. Turning left footed shot, Steinwasher makes the grab as he was in perfect position and equal to the challenge from the left foot of David Goldsmith. Right at Steinwasher. Good punt there by Steinwasher. And now Rafa goes down. Once again, tries to step through, but there's just too many Michigan Bucks in the area. And in midfield right now, that five across midfield for the Bucks, and with City down to 10 men and being forced to run to make up for the gap caused by Greg Janicki's absence. Nate Steinwasher comes up off his line. Here come the Bucks again. Stepping through the middle. Look out on the near side if they choose to reverse field. Veroni here stepping through the shot and the save made by Steinwasher. What a save by Nate. Well, maybe the best look the Bucks have had here tonight. And Steinwasher rises to the challenge. What a save by Steinwasher to go down and get that ball. Now City need to be careful of this set piece here in the 11th minute of extra time. Giuseppe Baroni will be the point man on the corner. Bucks with that man advantage. Detroit City with 10 men. Back post. It's knocked back over the goal line by City. Another corner coming up for the Bucks here in the 12th minute. It was dangerous. That went off Carroll's chest and back into the mixing bowl. And thankfully for City, we're sh shepherded it over the line. We'll do it again. Back post, and boy, there's bodies flying everywhere into the net. What a claim by Nate Steinwasher. That is a man's claim in the air. He stood tall. Got the paws in the air. Boy, bodies are flying everywhere. They knocked the goal off the goal line. And here, one on four, trying to do his best as Mets again. And he did his best, he earned the call. City with an opportunity, possibly John, to serve one up inside the 18 if they so choose. See the interesting about that, that thing about that though, Neil. In a, in a different situation, 11 v 11, you might see City commit men forward, four men behind the ball as the free kick was taken, taking no chances that quickly on the counter on a scuff free kick we could be going the other way. Danny Deacon's pass isn't handled, and here come the Bucks again. Trying to turn towards midfield, Ivo Cerda settles it down. Cerda stepping through, boy, has it taken away expertly by Bartel. That's a great challenge and a clean challenge by Bartel. Right foot blast will miss the left post. You know, anytime you see a player shooting like that back across his body in open space that far from goal, there's a little frustration setting in. The Bucks, you know, it starts when you go down to 10 men like City did. You you have to withstand the storm, and that's why you drop back into that 4-4-1. But after a while, and we've played 11 minutes or so since that red card, you start to wonder why you haven't converted on the man advantage. And it starts to get into your head. And you start to see that space and take the, the, the shot at goal, and now we've got a foul, and could we see a booking? We have a walk over by the official. Ben Pierman was animated about it, as was Omar Sinclair. No booking forthcoming. But now City have proven they can hang with the Bucks, 10 v 11. And by the way, Detroit City have experience coming back a man down. Their supporters will remind you of the fact they were down a man to Lansing United and behind 3-0 and came back to draw here at Keyworth Stadium last year. So playing at Keyworth down a man, something City have certainly seen success from before. Danny Deacon in the middle. Unable to settle that down. Again the ball punted down the field. Mensinger almost making a bid trying to step through two defenders. Sadie has a 
Knocked off his shin and over the line, so a throw in coming. We're in the 15th minute of extra time. By the way, we're hearing from people on Twitter that that match next week may not be at Nippert Stadium. It may be at a smaller stadium at the University of Cincinnati. So it might not be the full Nippert Magic, but still a great match in the second round of the U.S. Open Cup. There's a foul that will go against the box. And that was flagged by the referee's assistant, and they're going to make sure they're in the right position. Nice job by the referee's assistant on the near side to see that foul and flag for it. So now we're in stoppage time of the extra time. And Danny Deacon. And, John, this is a situation. DCFC can make a move here. Because you figure that, wh that whistle's coming. Yep, absolutely. And here's Deacon to serve it. Curls it towards the back post. Knocked down inside the box. It's punched out. And there is the whistle. The first half of extra time complete. Detroit City FC plays that first half of extra time with just 10 men for the most part. But, John, they stand tall. They don't concede. And the dream is still alive right now as it sits for Detroit City FC. Absolutely. They composed themselves after Janicki sent off for a high boot. If you've just tuned in, as you often say, partner and friend, where have you been? We saw Sean Claude Lawson make it 1-0 City with about a half an hour to go. And inside the final 10 minutes, a penalty assessed to Detroit City FC, converted by Pinheto for... Michigan Bucks that sent us to extra time city reduced to 10 men a few minutes into extra time when Greg Janicki was sent off for a high boot and reckless play and since then it has been city battening down the hatches they've had a couple of chances Deacon did put it in the mixing bowl Neil but nobody there for city to pick up the trash 15 more minutes of extra time the winner of this match will take on FC Cincinnati next week in the Queen City. That is how the U.S. Open Cup sets up for these two sides. Detroit City FC right now getting some instruction from Ben Pierman just off the side of their bench. Always interesting, Neil, to see the body language in the two huddles at halftime of extra time. You have three or four City players down on the ground. Nate Steinwasher appears to be having something stretched out. The city keeper is down on the pitch. The Michigan Bucks just all in a huddle, looking just a little bit more calm, cool, and collected at the moment. You know, appearances can be deceiving, but this city team is clearly tired. And Ben Pierman, the more animated of the two managers by far. He, he has a definite plan that he wants to see come out here, and he is urging his players to give him 15 more minutes and try to create something and try to not give the Bucks too much respect so that it becomes just a shooting gallery for the final 15 minutes. NGS Drew tweets at us with the hashtag watch city guys don't even worry about it. I'm totally not on the verge of a heart attack right now and I know there's a lot of fans out there feeling the exact same way. It's all to play for here the final 15 minutes of extra time. We're level at one Detroit City FC with 10 men. My name is Neil Rule. My broadcast partner, John Krieger. If you're with us, the 2018 U.S. Open Cup on ussoccer.com. Happy to have you with us wherever you may be watching as this U.S. Open Cup continues to gain steam here in America. Very popular event, increasing in popularity with every year that goes by. And this is why. You're playing for your life right now. 15 more minutes, maybe a penalty session. On the horizon, one team is going to walk out of here on their way to the second round, and the other team, well, they're just going to walk out of here. <laughs> Was that a dodgeball reference? <laughs> we are not on ESPN 8, the Ocho, yeah. my friend. <laughs> That's excellent. So Detroit City FC will have the possession to start with those 10 men. We're ready for the whistle. City will be moving toward the Keyworth. Check it away from the Keyworth Stadium wall here. 
toward their supporters down in the VIP lounge. Their normal home end. And the wind will be at their back. A little bit less than what it was when this match started, but the wind still a little bit of a factor. We've seen that happen a couple times here tonight. Ball sent into Brad Santala. And it over the line. And again, John, as you said, you know, you don't like to put it this way, but if City was given the option, they'd take the penalties right now. They'd bite your hand off right now. Absolutely. Because this Bucks team has been big and physical. And City now coming forward. There's an attempt, but it's right at Haig. Bartell with the opportunity. Haig equal to the challenge. Bucks trying to build some possession. As they work their way up the pitch. Evo Serda, the team captain at the University of Michigan, plays it ahead. Cyrus Sadie takes a jab at it with the boot. Confident pass from Sadie through the middle of Santala. Anybody else but Sadie, and I'd be wondering about that pass from Cyrus. Nice job. <laughs> Here's Danny Deacon. Deacon stepping through. He's been good tonight. Danny Deacon still on the move. And it played away at the last moment. And there's 10 v 11, Neil. Because right. of the city's shape, Deacon didn't have anybody to go to. That was a solo recon mission through, and he just got muscled off the ball. Brad Ruhawk plays it up ahead. Jake Roof, long ball over the top, finds a home to Goldsmith. Goldsmith, very accomplished goal scorer. Goldsmith played it back. He was trying to set something up, but Cyrus Sadie there to knock it out to touch. Here's Roof moving towards the middle. Guitar will drop it back to Ruha. Guitar now will try the middle to Dunwell. Wide to the left. 18th minute of extra time, 1-1 the score. Detroit City FC playing with 10 men. Roof. Guitar. Cross into the box, popped up in the air. Steinwasher. Pick it up. Sandwash will take a jog to the other end of his area and make sure he can find a friend and then get a back pass, and that killed about 12 seconds. Steinwasher. With not strong the best punch right in boot. the world. A little bit too strong as he sent it over the far sideline into the crowd. Trying to get the Northern Guard involved. John, the Bucks have had a love affair here with the right side in the second extra time session. That's kind of the way City had the love affair with the left side in most of regulation time, normal time. They have figured that they can try and pick on Cyrus Sadie. That, for me, is not the best course of action. They haven't had much joy with it. But if you bring it up the near side, maybe they're thinking they can reverse field, as they've just done and try to cut back and find some space. Dunwell through the middle, guitar. Across to the right again, here's Roof one more time. Working one on one, curls it over top of the bar, Steinwasher was on it. Nice step out by Roof to create the space. 1v1, he created his own shooting window, but couldn't control the body enough to put the power behind the ball, and it floated on him. Almost 120 minutes in. Guys moving a little more slowly across the pitch. Roddy Green figures to be the third and final substitution for Detroit City at the next opportunity. As you begin to line things up, don't you, John? PKs. Yep, you want your guys out there. And that's where it becomes who do you take off because you've got to get to penalties. And so you're always loath to take off a defender. 
But you're bringing on Roddy for who? In order to set up that PK lineup. Randy Deacon waiting for some help. There's just not a lot of help there because Detroit City FC only has 10 men. Long ball sent up through the right side. Raphael Mensigan. Mensigan's been great here tonight. Just can't get on the end of that one. That's 120 minutes of soccer on those legs right now. Yeah, the Valpo product doing yeoman's work tonight. And there's a Michigan Bucks player down with a cramp behind the play. The Bucks keep it going, but it's 10 v 10 right now. So there'll be some space out there on the pitch. Roof drops it back. Dunwell. Makuna. And the Bucks player not getting up, so it's a little more serious. And now the Bucks will play it back and ask for the referee to stop things, which as the team in attack, they have the right to do. And so now we'll have a sit down and everybody will wait and recharge and we get to go into that, that uh, great unknown known as more injury time. But it's worth noting that the player will have to come off once you've had play stopped for you. You have to come off and then be waved back on by the referee. So for a time until the referee determines that the Bucks player is fit for play, we will have 10 v 10. And you look at a couple of city players who are taking the moment to stretch out fully on the keywords pitch. Everybody and stretch stretching. out their own calves. Yeah, everybody stretching right now. Everybody cramping up, giving it their all for 120 plus minutes. They have literally left it all on the field here tonight. Ronnie Green still waiting to come in to this match. Both of these sites have played their hearts out. And, you know, some of these regional seedings and uh, regional draw pots and some of the way this comes out, you know, in, in DCFC U.S. Open Cup history, you take a look at, at DCFC's trips to this tournament. They've made four appearances. One of them, they lost to RWB Adaria on penalty kicks. They lost 3-0 to the Bucks in 2015. They beat the Bucks in 2016 on penalty kicks, and now the Bucks again. This is a matchup that I think belongs in the second round or further in the U.S. Open Cup based on how these teams play. I know it's not, not seated and set up that way, but it's a brutal first-round tie, and both these teams have played befitting the tournament, befitting themselves, befitting their two clubs. Now Roddy Green into the match, replacing Rafael Mensigan. again. So Mentz again, a well-earned rest here tonight. He has run several miles on this pitch this evening. And he's going to be fun to watch in the NPSL for Detroit City FC. Here's Roof again. Ball played out, but only. Touch towards the top of the 18, played out by City, a throw in coming. For the 24th minute of extra time. Of course, there'll be some injury time added to that. Not quite sure how much it will be. Detroit City FC trying to hold up. Get to penalties. That is the goal. Sinclair blasts it down the pitch. That's just popping the top off the pressure cooker. Relieving things just a little bit. Pitch guitar in the middle. City, by the way, Neil, they were in a 4-4-1 for a while. Now in defense, they're in that 4-4-1. But the minute they get possession, they're taking a little bit of a risk here. They're going to a 4-3-2. And they're sending a second man up when they're in position in midfield. Here's a dangerous opportunity. Nifty back hill to the top of the 18. But here's Roddy Green with those fresh legs. And Roddy Green trying to make a run. Expertly played off the ball by Brad Ruhak. Boy, that was a great defensive play by Ruhak. Nice job by Green to try to run by a man, but Ruhak in good position. And then it's played out to touch, and City will have a, a throw. Now, this is a throw in midfield. So you take a look at this, and City sets up on the near side with a couple men up front. Cyrus Sadie actually sliding up next to Roddy Green there for a minute to touch in. Ben Pierman 
Getting about as offensive as you can when you're down to 10 men. Well, now you're down to, you've played 25 minutes of extra time. You've got five left, and you've got a chance with the ball approaching the attacking third. You give it a go, see what happens. If you get possession, you maybe commit that extra man, but now you turn it over. And a nice step in there by Santala to rescue it. And Cyrus Sadie there to give him an outlet to pass the ball to. So many times you'll step in and, and intercept possession and then have to rush that first touch and give it right back. And Sadie staying right with Santala. Martell with the pass to Roddy Green. Roddy Green looks like he has juice because he just came into the match. That throw in awarded to the box. Getting ready to cross into the 27th minute of extra time. Nothing happens, we're going to penalties. Everybody's favorite way to end a football match. <laughs> I was waiting for that from you. I don't disappoint. 27th minute. Although I suppose when you're down to 10 men, look at this cross. And that's a heads up, well controlled header to get it out of danger for City. Sadie heads it over the line. Ruhak. Makuna. Dunwell. Guitar. Had to send it out wide, and they do. To Roof again. Roof is cross! And that just misses the right post. That was Evo Serda that got on the other end of it. That just missed the right post because Stephen Carroll sacrificed all of his body to get in the way of Serda and get a boot on the ball and push Serda off enough that he could direct it past Steinwasher. Stephen Carroll, you're going to feel that in the morning, and it's a well-done play. Giuseppe Baroni with the corner, curls into play, headed up to the six. It's loose out in front. Was that cleared off the line, Neil? I believe it was. Wow. Unbelievable off the line. I wasn't quite sure how far the City player was off the line, but Steinwasher giving a pat on the back of one of his teammates that may have kept this game one all with three-plus stoppage to go. Ruha. Hands over it. Roof. Turning with it. Baroni touches it through to the middle and it's blasted out of harm's way by Stephen Carroll. That's a smart play, Stephen. Things looking a little lax at the back. Just put as much leather through it as you possibly can and make people reset. Absolutely. Well done. 120 seconds of extra time plus stoppage left. Cyrus Haiti with some wizardry along the near side. Bartel gets it back, sends it down the right side. Sinclair too far. And Sinclair just the term you like to use, really leggy right now, which you have a right to be. You're almost 120 minutes in. Throwing awarded to City. Sinclair will scoop it up real quick. Stephen Carroll will jump up to join the attack. Sinclair very deliberate with this throw in. Sends it in inside the box. City settles it down temporarily. Oh, get back, track back in a hurry now. And thank heaven for a heavy first touch if you're City to allow some people to get back. Here comes Roof on the attack anyway. Roof. Being tracked by Roddy Green. Roof still with it. Bucks clamoring for a handball. Official says play on. Close, but I think the correct decision. If it did hit the arm, I don't think the arm was in an unnatural position. And I don't think the player had too much to say or know about it. Ball sent ahead. Roddy Green on the move. Sadie's jumping up into the play. And off the line is Jimmy Haig. Boy, dangerous counter from Detroit City FC. Artificial surface, and it just ran on him. I think on a natural grass surface, that's entirely different. And now a handball. It will be a handball. Stoppage time of extra time, Neil. How much of it is left? That is the question. 
Detroit City FC very deliberate. This is where if you're Steinwasher, it's perfectly okay to take a yellow card for time wasting. Or City as they take the free kick. There it is. Ahead. There is the whistle. In 120 minutes, not sufficient to determine a winner here in Kiwar Stadium. We are going to penalties. So they have a coin toss at midfield between the two captains, Neil. And we'll have a five minute break here. And this is how this will work. The two captains will get together. The visiting captain will call the toss. On you win the toss, you have the choice to shoot first or second. The other team has the choice of which end the penalty kicks will be taken at. And then you have to decide your first five shooters. We will have a minimum of five shooters. If we're tied at the end of five shooters, it will be a miss-make situation. I think your backyard game of horse, only with much higher stakes. Absolutely. Your life is on the line here in the U.S. Open Cup. The winner goes to FC Cincinnati next week. And that's what's on the line here. We've got about four more minutes of break time while they sort everything out. What we're going to do for penalties. Nate Steinwasher for Detroit City FC. Jimmy Haig for the Michigan Bucks will be on center stage. Who will make the play? That is the question here tonight in Kiewer Stadium. Very entertaining match though, Mr. Krieger. Fans certainly have gotten their money's worth here tonight. We talked about the level of talent that's on the field, high level talent. We've seen a high level match here this evening. We're gonna shoot down toward the Keyworth wall, end of the stadium it looks like. I don't know who will shoot first. We'll get that information from the officials. But we're going to shoot, it appears, down toward the end with the famous Keyworth Stadium wall. They've sent the ball kids down that way. And now we'll set the penalty lineup. If you're just joining us, Sean Claude Lawson gave City fans reason to pop some smoke as the Northern Guard commute on mass <laughs> look at that down toward the end where the shooting will take place everybody's doing it on every side of the stadium but as you said sean lawson gave city the jump to take a one nil lead with about 30 minutes of football left and a controversial penalty called against city and alfonso pinario went lower right side Level this match at one. That is where we stand right now as we move towards penalties. And John, my question to you, if you're the Bucks right now, you played about 90% of that extra time with a man advantage, but weren't able to cash it in. On the philosophical side, on the mental side, does that take any bit of a toll on you in terms of kicking yourself, thinking about what might have been? It's a tough question. No. Um, it, because penalties is, you've got to steal yourself for being in penalties. And at this point, it's it's honors even. And I think, if anything, you have a little bit of a mental edge if you're the Bucks because you've already taken a penalty tonight and you beat Nate Steinwasher rather easily. Steinwasher left his line early and Pinieto was able to just roll it in the opposite corner. You saw that. Now keep in mind, Steinwasher has saved a penalty for DCFC last year. But if you have a situation like that where you've seen him beaten by a penalty, it might give you a little bit of a, a mental edge to know that you could do that again. On the other side, Jimmy Haig, a very good keeper, has made some very good claims in the air tonight, very physical keeper, and untested by City from the penalty spot. Jimmy Haig, the keeper. For the Bucks, Nate Steinwasher for Detroit City FC. It looks like the Bucks will be shooting first, the shooter number 12. And Alfonso Pinario, he's the one that lit the scoreboard for the Bucks. So he will have first crack at it. Goes the against most, Steinwasher. The most nerve-wracking time for all the fans associated. 
Here we go. We're in penalties. Inario v. Steinwasher. What do we got? Pinario off the post. Alfonso Pinario rings the right post. Nate Steinwasher. I think Nate helped it onto the post. Gets the job done. So the early advantage will go to Detroit City, and they're going to their guy, Danny Deacon. Steinwasher Pinario went the same way he went during the regulation penalty. And Steinwasher was going that way all the way and helped it onto the post for Steinwasher's second penalty save in his city shirt. Danny Deacon, the 64th overall pick in the 17 MLS draft, steps up left foot and a huge save made by Jimmy Haig. Boy, he cooked, boy, he kicked his right foot out and stopped it. Deacon went to the middle. That we're is still level. That's a looky looky what I found save is what that is. It counts the same. Haig was beaten, knew it, kicked the leg, and found football. So can Steinwasher do it again? Here we go. Right foot, left side of the net. The Bucks get on the board first here in the penalty session. Brandon Bartell will try to level penalty session for Detroit City FC. So the Bucks with the make. Brandon Bartell now with all the pressure on him. Bartell steps through and a save made by Jimmy Haig. A 1-0 advantage here in the Penalty session for the Bucks, and right now, John, the Bucks in the driver's seat. Nate Steinwasher needs to stand tall against Giuseppe Baroni. So now, with two misses from Deacon and Bartel, Baroni coming out and can give the Bucks a commanding lead. First two penalties, one to the right side, one to the left. Where will Baroni go? Baroni hesitates, fires, and puts it home. A 2-0 Bucks advantage. And so now they must score. They City have to up. Yeah, City have to score here. No, they, they actually don't they don't to score have yet, to. But they have to score. Yes. You want to put a little pressure on. Santala. Mathematically, they don't have to score, but for all intents and purposes, they have to score here. Brad Santala steps over it. Right foot, finds a left corner. DCFC still has life. So it's now 3-1, which means that a converted penalty on either of these last two penalty kicks by Michigan Bucks will send them through. And your shooter is number 14. Brad Dunwell. Good to send him to the up. second round. Dunwell. Save made by Steinwasher. As it's touched wide, Detroit City FC still has life. Still 3-1. And walking to the spot, needing to score, is that Sinclair? Omar Sinclair. The Northern Guard could use an Omar, oh my moment. They have to have it. If Omar doesn't convert, it's over. With just one shooter remaining after Sinclair in a 3-1 deficit. Claire measures it, hesitates, fires, and scores it in the right side. Three to two. Nice hesitation. Kept moving forward, though, didn't stutter and stop. Could have been declared a foul run up. Kept moving forward, which is the rule, and put it past Hay. So we go to the biggest moment of Nate Steinwasher's city career. 
Jared Timmer with the boot. Finds the upper right hand corner. It's a 4-3 Bucks lead. And the City are trying to even it up. Stephen Carroll to level it, and he does in the left corner. Both sides have made three penalty kicks of the five. And so now we go to miss make. Well, it's all on the line right here. We're right back where we started from, John. Mitch Guitar stands over it. Guitar. Easy. Upper left corner. Very confident take from Guitar. So now it's on City to stay alive. So the official line score at this point. 1-1 after extra time, and 4-3 the Bucks lead on penalties. And to take it now is City's number 22, Elliot Bentley. So Bentley in a huge spot. He knows what it's like to win a penalty shootout at Keyworth. He's done it here before. Last year in the playoffs, needs to do it again. Left foot chip, perfect from Elliot Bentley. A tremendous stutter step, too. So we'll do it again. Not a huge run up. Didn't give Fiscus, or rather, didn't give uh, Haig a whole lot of clues. Just put it in the corner nicely. Evo Cerda. You got any plans tonight? We could be here for a while. We get caught to the back room. That's fine. <laughs> I could bed down here at Keyworth. Evo Cerda. Steinwasher, Serda, Steinwasher closes the door. What a save by Steinwasher. Beautiful low dive, it was a well-placed kick. Steinwasher had to be all world to make the save, and all world he was. A great dive to the corner with a firm hand to palm it wide, and City have a chance to go through to Cincinnati. Roddy Green can put DCFC into the next round. Can Green deliver? Yeah. Of course! Roddy Green finds the back of the net. Detroit City FC has a date with FC Cincinnati in the 2018 U.S. Open Cup. Roddy, take a bow, son. You've just put yourself in the Detroit City and U.S. Open Cup history books. Roddy Green with everything on the line shows nerves of steel and puts DCFC through who played almost the entire extra time with just 10 men. They rise to the challenge and they're moving on. Haig went the right way. He read the way that Roddy Green was going to go. It didn't matter. Top corner, Roddy Green electric. Tonight, the Kings of Keyworth booked their passage to the Queen City. And DCFC lives to fight another day. I told you they play well 10 v 11 in this building. They prove it again tonight. They batten down the hatches with a rear guard effort to get to penalty kicks, Neil Rule, and in penalty kicks. A couple of huge saves by Steinwasher. And then Roddy Green puts them through and books Detroit City's passage to the second round. Time for us to pick our man of the match, Neil. Do you have a thought on who your man of the match is? Is it easy as saying Roddy Green? Or do you pick someone else? 
I mean, Nate Steinwasher put him in the spot, right? I mean, uh, can, can you do and, and I don't like to do this usually and do the whole co thing, but I think you got co men of the match here tonight. Roddy yeah. Green delivered, Nate Steinwasher delivered. Detroit City FC is moving on. I'm right with you, partner. Credit where credit is due, and, and we'll take our viewers through how we got to the situation and with the penalty shootout. But you have Steinwasher that came up with a couple big saves to extend the shootout. And then, of course, you had Roddy Green with a cool penalty. But in regulation and extra time, let's not forget Mensingen, who ran all over the pitch. Stephen Carroll with a couple of great defensive plays. Elliot Bentley with a couple of great defensive plays. Danny Deacon with the way he controlled things in midfield. It was a true team effort by Detroit City tonight, especially when they went down to 10 men. And that five or 10 minutes after the red card, Neil, when they went down to 10 men and they had to batten down the hatches and not give up the goal that I think would have sealed their fate. Once they got past that after Greg Janicki was sent off and they realized they were still alive, they kept going through, and what a penalty shootout we had. And Detroit City FC, for the second consecutive time in the U.S. Open Cup, dispatches the Michigan Bucks. Your final line score after extra time, Detroit City FC won, Michigan Bucks won, penalty kicks 5-4 to Detroit City. Detroit City FC moves on and they will go to FC Cincinnati in the second round of the 2018 US Open Cup and that is the story so DCFC fans going home happy here tonight and they can take to the highway next week and go on down to the Queen City to support their squad in the next round of the U.S. Open Cup. So for the second time, Detroit City FC burns the box in penalties. And how about this, Neil? How about this for responding after going down 2-0 in a penalty shootout? Seven rounds. They missed their first two, Dead City. Five consecutive makes to get through to round seven. And then you had that big, late 